Que ya la cámara no la eh, First one, April, uh, 12th of April, uh, 1953. Um, as a young boy, he's very athletic, strong, um, yeah, high energy. Any of you that have gone on Jack of Walks, I think we know. Like, uh, he's powerful, and to, to walk with him, you have to run to keep up with his, his city pace. Uh, so he was born with, with a lot of power and and a natural rena renounced movement uh, growing up after post-World War II where his parents were quite successful. Um, but he had no taste for, for um, the, the lifestyle of, you know, homes and, and wanting to build, you know, the sort of lifestyle. He was a musician. And from a very young age, he always had an instrument in his hand. His guitar being his favourite instrument of choice. Um, he recently said, actually, that uh, you know, uh, if he had such a love for music, the first thing he would do when he'd wake up would be to pick up his guitar and play. And he told me one time in the garden that he would even when he was young, go and perform in, in the community and he would just make up and punchy songs for people. He just, it is sweet and sharp. The intelligence that he had, he would engage into just taking in that situation and the people around him and coming up with something very creative and witty. And uh, he, he, he would do that when he was young. So it was quite challenging for him as this young, energetic man, musician by heart, uh, you know, coming, but even though he had this, 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 this musician, this, you know, creative aspect of him, he had a deeper, a deeper sense of wanting to connect and seek a spiritual you know, spirituality. So he took his guitar and he headed across lands east at the age of 17, travelling through the Middle East, which some of you may have heard was quite um, an interesting journey. Um, but uh, he got he eventually, uh, after some near misses, uh, Christian had bigger plans for him. Um, and he arrived in India. So while traveling in India, he was guided uh, to Rishikesh. Rishikesh Varanasi, Varanasi. And when in Varanasi, he came across um, the mantra of Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Ram. And he took this mantra to heart and carried on in his journey. And um, even when his mother was leaving, he went back to Europe. And uh, when she was leaving, her body was uh, cancer. Which this mantra, Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, because he felt in his heart, he knew that there was something to this. So time passed, he travelled back and forth, get back to India again. And when in Europe, travelling backwards, of course, came in contact, the great is coming into contact with um, the Eastern Romans. And so then it was then that um, it really began, his journey really began um, going into Brindavan. And what year was that? That he, 1978, he became a devotee in 1978. So, um, yeah, it's 1978 in Dalandam, and maybe first, he served there, he served there until 1984. And he expressed that he, he was, you know, a very intelligent, energetic, and again, as I mentioned before, creative person. So it was quite challenging for him. He said that uh, joining Krishna consciousness, he was quite, by nature, a, you know, his own individual. You know, he, he had an individual sense, and this is, uh, he was very, he's, he's explained that he was very serious about the serious things, but also very light and jovial when it came to other things, so very strict. He took to the Christian consciousness and very strict, and he started a very practice. He said it was quite challenging for him because he was a musician and was very used to playing his guitar wherever he went, but once he joined, he wasn't allowed to play guitar anymore. And so he said he refused to play the harmony for 20 years. That's not, it's not a good instrument. He, he found it. He just didn't have a taste for the harmony. It took 20 years for him to develop a relationship 
with the harmonium because it was not like the guitar. But as we all know, he mastered that harmonium and he mastered it, you know, that so if you do in the way he was able to just bring it to life and to transcend us all to, to the spiritual world with that harmonium that he had a lovely relationship with. And so he began his journey in Vrindavan and his, his intelligence and his wit led him very early on. In fact, in his second day, he became the manager of the restaurant, the Hare Krishna restaurant in Vrindavan. And he was you know, very strategic and intelligent in the way he was thinking. So management came very natural to him. And which we then saw, you know, uh, he was given quite a few of the hard, the hard parts um, within the, you know, our, our history of, um, you know, big construction sites, you know, he constructed, uh, was coordinating the construction of the Philippines and Marty. And he said that was quite interesting because one of the reasons why he left home at such a young age was he had no taste for construction and buildings. His father used to take to was at the house when guests would come to oh, the house. He lives in the house. He found that quite, um, quite ridiculous and had no taste for that. He said it's quite interesting yeah. that he joins. It's kind of one of the first things, you know, he does in his major projects is to build, <laughs> is to build the samadhi, but it was something he threw himself into. And then, of course, as we know, he then went on to, um, going into Vrindavan and becoming the president when there were some issues there in Vrindavan they were having challenges with with uh, you know, community and and with the land and projects. But again he took that service very serious and he managed you know he would wrap the drives at two AM and change his to four Mongol Arch uh ten Mongol Arch every day and then of course during the day he would be relentless serving and you know, and lovingly serving and doing everything that he could. He said wherever he went, people we would come at him with checkbooks to find this and that. And you know, he was he doubled a lot. And then um, he had the uh, the shooting happened in Rhodesia, and then back then they came to take his time. And then he came to Australia, and that's where he first developed his love for Australia and the Australian people. He said it was quite. An interesting journey. He'd been spending years in Vrindavan where there was always talk of lotus feet and everything was spiritual. And when he came to Australia, and when he was in Australia, he faced himself and his, his wife at the time in Melbourne. So he spent some time in Melbourne uh, Temple and then went out to, we had a farm at the time called Yigod Desh up uh, near Yildura, up on the Murray River, a very big, how many acres is that farm? 20,000 acres in farm laws. They would grow watermelons and rock melons, rock melons, so, and it was based on the Murray River. So he'd come from Vrindavan, and then he went to, you know, came to Australia, and as he said, as in Vrindavan, there was talk of, you know, loads of streets, and he gets here, and next thing is that he brought a dish, and the devotees are saying, come on, move your horse. Getting there and working in the farm, he said that was why I, <laughs> I thought to up from the lowest feet to come on, move your horse. <laughs> but again, he's a little bit and uh, yeah, he said he really developed a, an appreciation for the Australian um, culture and people he found quite amusing and, and really liked the quirkiness of that culture, and as we know. That relationship continued over many years and, and grew well. Before we knew it, um, he took Sanyas in 1997. Um, so then, um, 97, he, uh, so he had taken Sanyas, he chose, you know, which is quite extraordinary. There are not many people in our tradition that actually go from. <coughs> Greenhouse Ashram into Van Cross and to San Yas. It's not something that is, is done very often and is an exemplary um, uh, mark on, on his character and, and his, his commitment and journey into his, his simple life. So, taking San Yas, after he took San Yas, he said he stood out uh, of the manor and he had his son there and he's like, Well, what do I do now? And a car came along, so because I said, we're going to the Czech Republic, do you want to come? And he went, okay. 
So uh, off he went, and this is where his journey began with becoming, becoming um, eventually a, a, an initiated guru, um, which again, in that regard, is why it's an extraordinary uh, situation for he took his second initiated, an initiation on the third way to Maharaj and um, was then um, initiating disciples under Jadwai Kimaraj's instruction, which is not something that, you know, it's, it's normally seen. Normally, the, the uh, guru leaves before the disciple who takes seven months becomes initiating. So it's a very extraordinary life and situation and journey that Kadam Kamaraj has had from the very beginning. Um, the fact that, you know, he went at 17 headed um, and he had quite a few new misses, um, you know, with his health and with, with uh, his well-being. Um, you know, he is sort of on um, fire, so he was ultimately shot in Vrindavan. He, you know, had malaria five times in one year at one point in Vrindavan. He went through many challenges. And um, so then... Once he hopped on in the car to the Czech Republic, he developed a really nice trip with, uh, with the devotees in the Czech Republic and then began uh, sides for the years to come, initiating. And so, skipping forward, we then all men at our own time have the, uh, the great, great fortune of being able to. Um, Develop a relationship with Kadama Maharaj as a disciple or as a well wisher. Maharaj made it to come to Australia twice a year, but we really did have a nice attachment. It was a very far place for him to travel to, uh, as he was, you know, mostly sort of based in Europe and he would spend time in India, but then South Africa, and having gone to South Africa from here once before to, um, and uh, travel with Maharaj to South Africa is a very far way, even from here. So he, you know, did a very, went really out of his way. He was, um, he had a very nice loving relationship with Australia and with us. So, um, yeah, we have all had a great fortune to watch and to, to take instruction, be inspired by Maharaj's uh, very personal approach very personal in his in sharing his particular journey with the rest of us in his classes and in his instructions. And he had he had a big relapse also, he had that very personal and practical experience and was able to, to guide and give good guidance and instruction having been through the uh, the various ashrams himself. And you know was very, very practical in that sense. So uh, then of course we we move forward in years. Um then Maharaj, you know, having had many close calls today his lifetime, got the uh, the message that this time, you know, he, he had cancer and it was terminal. And so Maharaj decided that he wanted to accept Krishna's Krishna's will as it was, um, and wanted to focus on being able to live to the very end and giving a wonderful example to his disciples and well wishes, and wanted to remain in clear consciousness right to the very end, which, which he did. And so, his, even in his leaving, he was not only through his lifetime, but he a wonderful example to us all. Even in his departure, that's where we really saw the real depth and strength of his character, his, his relationship with Krishna and his determination. For he really um, stayed in a group focus and he was able to, that, that nature of his, where he's very analytical and can arrange and organize things, he even did it right to the very end. In, the way he was able to share with us instructions along the journey as, as his health declined and was able to, as we will see later, give even the last, um, last instructions and create a foundation and to, um, you know, share. You know, he was so personal and so open. He was openly sharing his own journey right to the very end. And um, for that, we were all 
very, very uh, fortunate because it's another example for us. Um, we then ultimately um, come to that situation, but even from his nurse to able to now deepen, deepen our, our focus and our commitment to our bounds and to the, the regulations, four regulations that we've you know, really principles you know, you know taking a vow to follow and to uh, you know be be servants of change in the holy name. So now um, that's just a brief introduction. I apologize if there was any any uh, you know anything that's not quite correct, please forgive me for that. Next we'll move on to the glorifications. I've heard enough, more than enough from me at the moment. So um, I'd like to open it up. Um, as an opportunity for, um, yeah. okay, okay, all right, so um, I'll open it up to the disciples to give offerings, so, so first, if you don't mind, we, um, we've we got, you know, wonderful opportunities, have Jai Sachi here, um, Prabhu, who's, who's a good friend of, of Maharaj's, and he has to go to work, so if you don't mind, I'd like to hand the microphone to him to give an opportunity to to share and um, then, then we can go on to the disciples. Okay. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Namo Krishna Padara Krishna Prasara Buddha Vesikya Tamara Krishna Goswami Vinamya Namo Krishna Padara Krishna Prasara Buddha Vesikya Bhakti Vedanta Goswami Vinamya Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pichari Nagira Vishya Shishuna Bhavni Pashwaka Vishari Nipanta Tanki Kalukhya Sati Pasi Vedaja Patita Nam Pavni Gheuru Vaishna Vyona Monamu uh, first, I would like to apologize a lot of senior devotees here. They should be speaking before me, but you know my situation, I am here for the world. I just want to be worthy in glorification. Uh, <clears throat> this is a very hard time for most of the disciples. Uh, when something like this happens, a lot of memories come to the mind and uh, those who have been in a similar situation, it takes you back there. So, when Chila Gurudev left in uh, 2002, it was a shock. Nobody expected. And uh, it shook not only the disciples, but the whole movement. Everybody was shocked. A lot of people woke up, people who had left on, on the bridge there, they all came back. It kind of, you know, saying, Jeeva Jago, Jeeva Jago, Jago. So, <clears throat> with Maharaj, it was quite different. Maharaj knew that he had a disease. He did not want to, basically, he tried to kill it. He left it to Krishna, he left it at Krishna's will. And, uh, and he prepared everybody. He tried to travel wherever he could meet his disciples. Then he went to Vrindavan and he invited all his disciples to come and meet with him. Give them personal instructions, inspire them, tell them how they can actually uh, how they can actually uh, go back to home, back to Godhead. So in a way Maharaj actually taught us how to leave this body. When Srila Prabhupada left, he did the same thing. He went to Vrindavan and he taught us how we can leave this body. And Maharaj did the same thing. Uh, we are very fortunate that Maharaj came here. Uh, one thing I was talking to Srila Gurudev, one thing I was talking to Guru Vandana about this, he said, when she was in the temple, uh, wherever, whenever Maharaj comes, Whenever Maharaj used to come, uh, if she says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Maharaj will stop and actually uh, speak to her. And he was so approachable in that way. And that was the beauty about Maharaj. Uh, a lot of Maharajas and a lot of devotees have glorified him. And one thing he said, they said was, he was one of the first 
great disciple of Siddha Prabhupada had accepted disciples. So up till then, it was most the disciples of Siddha Prabhupada, and I think he was the first great disciple that who accepted a disciple. So this is all glories of Maharaj. You hear a lot about him, what he did, how he saved the temple, how he built the temple, how he saved the temple. You hear a lot about this. Um, and we are very fortunate that uh, we have been in his uh, association, put so much instruction for him. He was in a position to give the last instruction, as Mataji has said. You'll be able to see, you should be able to hear that. And this is not something that is ordinary. It is something that has been contemplated for a long time. What is the last message he wants to make? And if you follow that, you will be successful. There's absolutely no doubt. The other thing I want to stress on is that Maharaj has proven that the system we are in, you know, being part of this one, being part of this Hare Krishna movement, it does work. You know, whatever I said in the Bhagavad Gita, whatever I said in the scriptures, you know, Maharaj proved it, that it works. So we don't have to go around looking here and there. Just follow, read no false hope, and you'll be able to be successful. The last thing I want to say, Maharaj was saying all the time, please take shelter. Don't try to evaluate yourself, how advanced you are, where you are. Just keep taking shelter. Take shelter of the Holy Name. Take shelter of your spiritual master. Take shelter of the Vaishnavas. And your life will be successful. You might be thinking, you know, Maharaj is gone. Maharaj is still here. And I was listening to his former Samar Krishna Maharaj, Shiva Gurudev. He was saying, I'll just give you an example. Suppose you want to go to Vrindavan. He'll take you a day. He'll take you a few couple of days to get there. But if you want to actually your mind, if you want to think about Vrindavan, you are already there. Isn't that right? Mind is still material and still can go that far. But when you get a spiritual body, then there is no restriction. Srila Buddha said, it takes an instant from here for Jiva to go back to go to Vrindavan. That's how fast it is. So if it takes him an instant to go there, if you call him, why can't he come back? So you might be thinking, you know, if he's already saving Radha and Radha Samshunda, why should he come back? Then there's a past time there. When the Krishna was in Dwarka, he expanded himself into 16,000 forms. And he was with all the queens at the same time. But you might say, oh, that's Krishna, he can do it. But we are just jivas. But then, when Narada Muni went there, he also transformed into that and when he forms and went to all the palaces at the same time. So this is the power of the devotees. Kadanda Kamala Maharaj can be there and can be with you at the, all the time. Prabhupada said there was at a moment when I did not feel the presence of my Guru Maharaj with me. So your Guru Maharaj is with you. He's waiting for you. He said, I'll see you the other side. The question is, up to you how long you want to make it work. Whether it is this lifetime, whether it is same lifetime. So if you follow the instruction, his last messages that he has given, then you can go back to God in this life. So remember, the spiritual life I was reading in the Srimad uh, Bhagavatam where Prabhupada says there is no duality in the spiritual world. And you wonder, you know, there's happiness. And union and separation, so there is happiness and sadness. But in the spiritual world, they are both same thing. They are both causes ecstasy. So on the spiritual world platform, as you are trying to Maharaj, it's purifying. When you are thinking and laughing about him and listening to his love, it's also purifying. It is the same thing. So with this message, I any disciples, anyone, if I can help in any way, you know, when we had discussed this, a lot of people, this I have called, you know, a lot of people came and helped us. And I know I can't do much, but if you need a shoulder to cry, I'm here. And uh, if you need a ear to listen to, I'm here. So, on this very day, where Maharaj is going back to Godhead, but we're going to miss his association. Let's pray. 
then we can actually follow him and join him very soon. His Holiness is Kadam Karadhi Thank you, Jai Sathya Guru. Um, that was very nice, actually. It, it made me think, you know, as, as you mentioned about the, um, the ability for the, the, the devotees to be able to be in numerous spaces. You know, Kadam uh, Kadam Maharaj had said that he is, you know, he was greedy, he wanted to enter into the pastimes, the eternal pastimes of Srila Prabhupada's Lord Chaitanya as well as Radha Krishna. So um, I'm sure that, um, you know, if that was his desire, um, he would just probably obtain that. So um, thank you. Um, it's, you know, confirmed that, that he expressed that, that, that greed to, um, to enter into, into the nature leaders of, of all three. So now um, I would like to open up uh, the opportunity, uh, if, if you don't mind, first to the disciples of His Holiness Kanama Kanama Maharaj, if they want to share um, their feelings, their glorifications, their, um, there's no pressure, you know, considering the situation. So if you would like to say something, I, I really encourage you to do that, to share with us. Um, especially in, in this um, assembly, it's, it's nice to share. We have, you know, our senior, um, you know, devotees here that, as Jai Sachi said, have also shared this journey. There have been um, here before, they understand where we're at, what we're feeling. And so please do, if you do feel you do need to, um, you know, speak or share and and get some support, please, please, please reach out and do that because uh, we are not alone. Um, this is this is a journey that we all, you know, uh, follow in. You know, we're always following the steps of of uh, great inspiration ahead of us. So please, please reach out. But uh, would pretty much, you know, would you like to? Do you want to do the seniors first, if you want to? Okay. Okay. So, do you want to say something? Oh, yeah. He's the one. The one we should drive the side of the place, like the back of the house, so we can get down there. Now, I'm saying something. They brought a man up to China and gave us a sense of very positive, very intelligent. We can't make that down there, just keep. So thank you for your association. Um, first of all, we're going to, well, I feel that we, we better work to remember Krishna and his patient. Because if it wasn't for him, then he wouldn't have given us our spiritual master and association with the Kappa. So we can get our strength by uh, remembering Bhagavad and thinking about Bhagavad Gita, the living. Um, Maharaj's association to us. Well, without the spiritual master, then we can't know Krishna, and without Krishna, we can't know the spiritual master. That's why the equation works. So, in the life of Kandamba Kanava, from, from my little association with him, my appreciation of him is that he showed us that nothing is impossible in the material world. You know, even though we put a couple of limitations in our own uh, abilities, but he's shown us that actually that those uh, limitations uh, uh, can be, and they're not insurmountable, that they can be achieved, the goals can be achieved um, through, through uh, enthusiasm, breeds enthusiasm. So as a um, As a father, as a father, we uh, we like to see the children excel themselves better than, than ourselves. So this is also something that we should, you know, give give to our father uh, that gift of that uh, because Kandama kind of expected us to perform better than him, which is pretty hard to do. 
In fact, all our special masters, from our Krishna, Shiva Prabhupada, you know, expected us to perform better than, than they. Of course, you know, we, we can understand our own limitations, but at least uh, we should raise ourselves up to a higher game level than what we came to Krishna consciousness with. And hopefully, uh, you know, improve on that, that level day by day um, by associating with the devotees and by appreciating Krishna consciousness and appreciating Krishna. Um, we can do that. I, 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 I'm actually lamenting, is a little way, you know, seeing that, uh, you know, we can understand that when the spiritual master leaves us, it's actually quite lamentable. But we can also understand, you know, that when the, the saying, you know, when he reasons all that Vaishnavas die when living from the south, the Vaishnava lives to die, and living spreads the holy name around. So we can understand, you know, from my realization, Shri Prabhupada's passing is that the, the spiritual master is always there, you know. Uh, we just have to follow his instruction, and his instruction is no different than itself. So we're always in association with the Prophet, we're always in association with the spiritual master when following his instruction. It is great, quite wonderful, it's a gift. You know, it's something, it's a spiritual, it's a spiritual gift that uh, we can call upon at any time of the day or night. So the spiritual master is actually, he has never left us. In fact, in this situation, he becomes closer. You know, he becomes closer to us just by us remembering his instruction, by following his instruction, then he actually is there, like beside us. He's there in front of us, and we can actually see it. It's really quite amazing. It's, it's based on the spiritual world. Uh, you know, some of us, some of us have got to live a lifetime before we go back home. But uh, for those who have that follow the instruction of the spiritual master and uh, take the association of the in, in the right way, then actually we're already back home. It's not that we have to wait 60 years to go back to the spiritual world. Actually, the spiritual world is already there. It's just a matter of our consciousness. Uh, and and she the profile and the Gadamakana has shown us that by, by that consciousness and we're all in the spiritual world. Just the body limits us a, a, a time, 60 years or 100 years. But our consciousness is already there in the spiritual world. Here we are, you know, it's Monday, and we're associated with the Vaishnavas. And in each one of those Vaishnavas that we see around us, there's, there's a particle, there's a life of Dr. Karnava. He's, he's sowing a seed within every one of our hearts. Which is really quite a wonderful garden. You know? So, in our association, in the, next, in the coming years, you know, we'll see that garden fructified. We see those trees start to grow. We started that seed within our hearts. And we're just going to see that if those, those seeds within our, our God brothers and God sisters grow, we should again encourage those, cultivate those seeds, you know, help our God brothers, help our God sisters, keep the weeds down, give nice association. The association that Kandamba Karnava's example was just kindness, simple for the simple, you know. Keep it simple, charge your rounds. From, Appreciate Krishna consciousness, the gifts that uh, that that Radhavala has given us, and uh, and uh, keeping that uh, keeping that keeping that happening in the garden of, of Krishna consciousness, and uh, go back home. And obviously, you know, the marriage is an example. You know, we can see that again, nothing is impossible in Krishna consciousness. You can do anything. Uh, and we still can do anything. It's, just, it's a shame in some ways that, uh, you know, he's, he's departed. But uh, we can, uh, again, just 
<coughs> stay in contact with him by following his instructions and become better. And that's what that's basically what he wants us to do. I was in uh, I had an association on the uh, Orange Day Festival in Amsterdam, which is pretty far out. And uh, that day we had the whole Amsterdam. It was like like hundreds of monkeys. Nothing stood in our way. My eyes were just walking down like a like a a defiant general. You know, walking into the city, it's his hometown, and, and uh, I, I asked Marge, you know, did you ever think that you'd uh, come to come to uh, Amsterdam like this, you know, because you know, just early days, he used to, you know, do his rounds of back streets of Amsterdam and so forth, but but to walk down to find like a general with a, with an army, thousands of the guards behind him, you know. Nothing was stopping them. They were going over. It was like Howard Station. We you got know, seven o'clock, <laughs> five o'clock Howard Station. I mean, you put a you put a, a big wool bale or something in front of on the platforms. They don't go round. They just go over. They're just like a moving a moving sea of army of of, 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 of uh, Vaishnavas and. Um, and he, he said no, but uh, he was very proud of me, you know. He's very, very proud of him. and the father, you know, he's, he's very, very proud of you. And uh, he still is very proud of you, and he, and, uh, he just wants you to stay in Krishna consciousness. Be simple, and, and learn to love the bodies for what they are. Don't expect anything else. Just learn to love the bodies in a nice, simple way, and help them out. Because this is how you could, and we could need as much help as we can. Finish up and go back home. And, and, um, and in the meantime, have some get nice children, good life Christian consciousness, and, and open up more centers, and uh, help those people out there become more Christian conscious. That's, that's what we're here for. That's why Maharaj came. Uh, that's why he was empowered by, uh, by the Vaishnavas. He, I, he started his job, and uh, it's too well. Sit down, pretty much. Thank you, Gary. Um, actually, it was very nice that he mentioned about the um, the seeds. It made me think of the pastime um, when Maharaj was getting closer to the end. Jayadwaita Maharaj had been recommending that he have a tulsi plant in his apartment with him, but he said he just kept ignoring that. And then one of um, some of our god brothers and sisters had approached um, a good friend of mine to actually just get a tulsi plant for for Maharaj, and she so she arranged that. She walked in, and Maharaj looked and said, "What's this?" She said, "It's tulsi." <laughs> he goes, "I see that, but." She said, "Oh, your your disciples um, requested that I that I, f I find one and, and bring it to you." And he goes, "Oh, Jaid Waiter Maharaj has been telling me that I should have this tulsi plant." He said, "But I didn't want one." He said, "Every plant I've ever touched has died, so I didn't want." And then um, Burujan Prabhu happened to be in the room at the time. He said, "But Kadama Kanana Maharaj, you have." planted and grown so many bhakti latars all around the world so you know um and for any of you that uh for everyone who may have seen the the um the samadhi procession that tulsi devi was thriving and there she was at the front of the procession looking looking very fabulous plus my friend had also said well you have young boys here in the apartment they can help you look after her and she was thriving so but it was a very nice point that Burujan Prabhu had had pointed to to Maharaj that those there are many bhakti latars thriving, all because of um, Guru Maharaj's association and inspiration. So, if I could uh, invite Rambaru Prabhu, please, if you like to say some words. Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Simati Bhakti Vedanta Samadhi Nari 
Namaste, Saraswati Devi, Godwani Pajanini, Nirvashi Shashi, So I'm, I'm appreciating um, what Jai Sachi was saying in his presentation about grieving and how important it is to reach out if you find yourself overwhelmed uh, by grief. This is an enormous loss for those of you who are disciples of Kadamba Kanana Swami. And um, I remember when Srila Prabhupada left the planet that we didn't quite know what we should do. I remember the time, um, it was 2 a.m. in the morning, I was in Germany in Schloss Rettershof, and um, Hari Kesh Maharaj was the GBC at that moment, so he woke everyone up. We were all living in the temple. There were no outside the temple. And um, he brought us down into a big foyer in the castle like this. And um, he told the story of Prita Maharaj, you know, how uh, the first thing to do is you cry. And uh, I think his wife, Archie, was just let herself cry because we do feel like crying when we have a big loss. And sometimes, as devotees, we move very quickly to philosophy. But before we go to philosophy, we need to stay in our heart and let ourselves be with that loss and that pain. So um, I just encourage you all, if you're feeling feelings of loss, that's OK. That's all right. Uh, grief is the flip side of bhakti. This feeling of loss is a symptom of our love. And I remember when, um, when we were sitting there in this foyer, um, Hari Kesh was also quite a general, a uh, preaching general in those days. And he said, you know, now that he has left the planet, it's not going to be business as usual, because we didn't quite know what we should be doing. And he said, it's, it will be business more than usual. Now the legacy has come to you. And of course, we spent a week out on Harinam. That's how we managed our pain. And as I reflect also on um, the wake of the loss of Srila Prabhupada in our life in the uh, physical form, I realize also how many problems emerged because we didn't pause to grief, grieve. So I just encourage that it's important for us to sit a minute with this experience and see what it means to us. Um, knowing that Kadamba Kanana also began his devotional career in 1978, and Srila Prabhupada left the planet in 1977, um, it's very instructive uh, because everything that he learned, he learned from Prabhupada's books. And so often people will say, well, you're so lucky you got to see Prabhupada. And but so many Prabhupada disciples are no longer around. Where are they? Sometimes, right? So we can see that he got that uh, mercy just by reading Prabhupada's books. And it's one of the things I appreciate so much about him is that when you hear him speak, you can know he's got, where he's gotten that. It's just if, you've re, if you're reading Prabhupada's books yourself, if you're listening to his lectures, you can, you can hear. But he has realized those things. He's not just reading them. He's integrated them. So very powerful and very hopeful and encouraging to all of us. If you didn't meet Siddha Prabhupada, there's no impediment. He's in his books. So it's a really about us taking that mercy and uh, absorbing ourselves in particularly the purports that Srila Prabhupada wrote. I also very much appreciate uh, Kadamba Kanana's love for the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And I would encourage all of you, make sure you get to those books, uh, reading the purports of Bhaktivedanta Swami in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, because if you don't get there, you may not understand the mission and message of Lord Chaitanya and the mood. So if you all having reading circles or whatever, please immerse yourself in uh, the, the teachings of uh, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. I met uh, Kadamba Kanana, I guess it was in 1990, when my family moved to Vrindavan. 
we were sent to Vrindavan in order to start a Western preaching program, a van traveling Sankirtan program in Vrindavan. And we didn't have a place to be. And at that time, he was the temple president and, and had the brahmacharis that traveled with us, they squished into some gurukul room and uh, he gave a little place in the guest house around the back for my family, my two children. Madi now, who is 45, may, some of you may know Madi. He was just, uh, I guess he was about uh, 13, maybe he was 13 in those days. And um, he, encur he was so encouraging. He loved this mood of traveling and preaching even in those days, even though he had to stay back and manage so many things. And he would often kind of jump in our van and go with us to Kanpur or someplace for a preaching event. He would kind of sneak in the van. And I remember in those days thinking of him as such a young person. But I now know that him and I are the same age, shy of about two, three months. I'm, I was born in January 1953, and he was in April. So you know, I, never thought, I never thought of him as an older person because he's so youthful. He has such a young energy and kind of has that naughty boy sort of a glimmer in his eye. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? That, I mean, there's so many pictures of him. But there's one, one experience um, that I will always remember that, that shows what an incredible protector and uh, he's a bit of a kshatriya, but at the same time, Vaishnavas can perform all kinds of activities so he could manifest that. Um, there was a neighbor and we, had a, we finally had a home outside of the Krishna Balaram guest house. And there was a neighbor whose uh, husband be, went to the Himalayas and uh, became a self-proclaimed sannyasi. His name was Hasti Gopal. I don't know if you know. And he came back and he was a little bit strange. He was kind of a little bit mad. And he wanted to kidnap his own children, which were like three years old and four years old. And the wife was very anxious about that because he would do things like having the children circumambulate in fires in the middle of the night, some kind of weird ritual. So she was very afraid for the life of her children. So she approached me, who we were next door. We could look into their yard and we could see that, that he'd have the children up at night doing like these weird rituals around a fire. They were not devotional anything, and she was afraid because he would not let her leave. So my son, Madi, who's uh, here in Melbourne, he was 13, and we hatched a plan to somehow, because he, he kidnapped the children, and we followed with a rickshaw and somehow devised a plan and got the children and sent them away, but Hasti Gopal was very, very angry. And he um, chased us up the road in front of the Krishna Balaram temple, shouting, how can you treat a sannyasi like this? You know, I'm a sannyasi. And we ran into Kadamba Kanana's office, because we didn't know where to go. He was really on a hot chase for us. And when we came in there, we said, help. We don't know what to do. This guy is chasing us. And he came to the door, you know, and he's and said, what do you want? What do you want? Went, oh, they're treating me. I'm a sannyasi. How, how can they treat me like that? He said, well, what goes on outside of the walls of this mandir, we are not responsible for, you know, and he sent him away. But I felt so protected to, have, to be able to run into his office at any moment he was available, you know, um, you know, that's a bother to have somebody doing that. But that's a memory that sticks with me as a man who rose to whatever challenge was happening in that moment. And he was so fiercely a protector of Prabhupada's devotees and Prabhupada's temple and Prabhupada's message and mission. And um, yeah, it just has stuck with me a long time. So later, I moved away from Vrindavan, went to Mayapur, and, you know, he was in India. That's as much as I knew. And it was many years later, maybe 15, 20 years later, hadn't heard anything about Kadamba Kanana. He started to show up on Facebook things and YouTube things, and now he's in, in Australia, and now he's in Europe, and you now he's in... I mean, it was like, where? You are everywhere. And I never really... Uh, stop to listen. I'm listening to Prabhupada tapes. I'm not listening. You know, so many.
And, and you're not always listening to everybody's message. But when I found out that he um, was diagnosed with terminal cancer, I started to sit up and wanted to really hear what are his last reflections before he dies. And my professional training is as a grief counselor, but also a, a end of life specialist. You know, I, I am often at the bedside when people die in hospitals and hospices. That's what I do. And so it's very important for me to, to see how do people die? How do devotees die? What are they thinking of? What are their last thoughts? So I started to listen. I started to go to his weekly sanghas on the Zoom. And um, I was completely delighted and inspired to hear how realized and how uh, much he had absorbed Srila Prabhupada. I mean, everything he got was something I had heard in a tape or in a book. And uh, he said it was such an ownership. It had become him that uh, I just was completely astonished. And um, I grieve at the loss of him. But I'm so honored that we got those chances to meet him in the old days, because he's still such a empowered uh, personality and um, just so grateful. Kadamba Kanana Ki Jai. Thank you, Ramba Prabhu. Um, that was, yeah, very, very nice and very um, in in inspiring for us all. Um, so uh, next I'll invite um, Prabhav Prabhu, if you'd like to say some words. Thank you. Namo Vishnupadaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Pcharine Nirusha Sharnivadi Pashata Deshtarine Hari Yeah, um, if anybody knows about Kadamakana Maharaj, I will be the one to know more than you because I was in Vrindavan when he first came and joined the temple there. Because yeah. I just came from Mayapur, 1979, to join the Vrindavan Gurukul. And so he was already there, 78. And from what I can remember, he's a very strong person, like physically also, and mentally in every way, very strong. And uh, <clears throat> those days, they didn't have a, a kirtan roster like they have today. So I used to jump in and lead all the kirtan. <laughs> Even I do today. If you didn't have a roster, I'd be leading all the kirtan. Some people, they complain, oh, you, you do all the kirtan, you know, what about us? I didn't care. Anyway, so um, I had the backing of um, Kadam Kar Maharaj. And uh, he said, you lead. And, and after some time, he was following me. Because I was like younger, but very full on play the Wampur. And so we had this uh, one day, this um, Sandhyarati, that I had my own team from the Gurukul, Midanga player, Kartal player, my own team. So they ring the bell, and we jump out of the classroom straight to the temple. So somebody's already ready with the speaker. So I'm going to grab the phone. <laughs> so I'll be leading it. So go for it. And so Kadamakanan Maharaj, he was always there backing me in the Kirtan. So we had the Sandharati, and then after that we go around the temple. And then we went to the Gurukul building, the principal's office, Jagadesh Maharaj. And then we went to Loy Bazaar. We took the Kirtan all the way to the Loy Bazaar, running, and Maharaj was with us, all the way running to Loy Bazaar. Then we came back for 9 o'clock Arati. And Maharaj was there, so he said, go on, we, it's part of the... Um, they haven't had the 24-hour kirtan yet at that time. But he said, we can do all night. And I was tired. And Maharaj, I wasn't tired, but he was so pushy. And so, um, really, really tough guy. And there was many foreigners They used to join. They would travel and join in Vrindavan, like you said. They were traveling in India. And 
he was specially very full on. And so uh, I was changing my ashram. And so um, he grabbed me by the neck. I'm telling you, this is between us. Yeah. And uh, he had me against the temple door. And people coming in and out, in and out. It was one hour, he was holding my neck. He was telling me, like, you know, what is uh, ashram? You have to be Krishna conscious. Uh, you can't just uh, be so whimsical. A lot of stuff, you know, what sannyasis tell you. And uh, he wasn't sannyasi, but he was a grihastha. But I don't know what happened to him. He was almost like a sannyasi all the time. He was acting like it anyway. So um, after one hour, I like, thank you. <laughs> I went away and... Uh, um, I was, to my, I was telling, telling myself that, wow, he's really full on. And, but I didn't listen to him, you know. When the people decide, they don't listen to what he tells you, even though it's advisable. And so, um, and another time, I went to India from Australia in 1986. And I was checking my wallet. I was short of the money. You know, when you're um, brahmacharya and you don't have much money, and I was really worried. So I was counting every uh, money. And... Uh, Ramakana Swami is there in Calcutta. And so I, I said, you know, listen, I didn't have enough money. I had to go to this. And so he lent his money to me. I was, because when, when you were small and you were very anxiety and people help you. And he was very kind, actually, even though it's very tough. Like you were saying, somebody was saying, he's very, very kind and very loving. At the same time, he was tough. Devotees need to be tough. And Maharaj... Um, uh, even last time he was here, last time before last time, yeah. and um, I walked in the door, and he was taking prasadam in the Melbourne Temple, and uh, I didn't I just walk in, and he said, oh, Prabhupada, come sit down. I said, I already ate, but just want to yeah, have your association. So then when he was, talk, he was talking with me, there was a Mataji, um, very dark lady, African kind of a lady, his disciple. Yeah, her. And she came in and she was crying and everything. And I said to Maharaj, should I go? Maybe you need to talk to her. Like, uh, he said, no, 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 you stay here. I want to, I wanted to see how I deal with things and with people and my disciples. And he was very loving and very, uh, talking very softly and kind instructions. And I'm watching in case in case I have to become a guru one day, <laughs> maybe I have to deal like this. Not only men, as women, how you deal with them and stuff. And um, I, I was watching him. And so sometime as a devotee, um, you know, he didn't meet, like you were saying, he didn't meet Srila Prabhupada, but the way to connect with Krishna, you have to connect to the guru, to the Vaishnava. It's not that you can... So, like, I, I haven't met my grandfather, but he still exists. So similarly, we need to have affection. It's our expansion of Krishna consciousness, um, um, ultimate expansion of the mercy of Prabhupada. Our preaching is the expansion of Srila Prabhupada's mercy. So Every credibility we have in Krishna consciousness is the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is the mercy of Radha Balava. This is how we have to see Guru Krishna Prashade Pai Bhakti Lata Beach. So, uh, by the mercy of Guru one gets Krishna, by the mercy of Krishna one gets Guru. So we are all sitting here today. I also remember when Prabhupada uh, passed, left this world, and people were coming. And after Mangalarati, they want to tell you, Prabhupada left last night, and no one can actually say this word. They all said, Srila Prabhupada last night, and they cried and left. They couldn't mention that Prabhupada actually left. At least five people, they couldn't say it. And as Subhag Maharaj came, he said, last night Srila Prabhupada have left this material world, he went back to Godhead. And even though I was like uh, this uh, kid's age, uh, seven, eight year old, uh, no, I, I, I'm 13 years old. I fasted whole day. Everybody fasted for whole day, and they had Pusharam vision for a week. So the idea is that spiritual master, they always live in the instruction. They're not here physically, but they're here, the instruction. 
So Gautama Maharaj, he loves Kirtan, very enthusiastic, very strong, very uh, always also very smiling. You see, all his photos are very smiling, very happy. He never, never expressed any anxiety because he knew that. I sometimes I'm thinking to myself, uh, it's pretty greedy for him to just take off. If he want, if he has cancer, there's so many devotees had cancer. They cured it. They took medicine, but he didn't have to do it. He could actually leave if he wanted to. So I'm just going to say that um, and I work really hard to be healthy, do yoga and try to, um, try, try to not drink milk and be vegan, try to be healthy so I can live long for preaching Krishna consciousness. So he, actually if he wanted to, he could live longer. So, but like somebody said, he was very eager to go back to Godhead. But back to Godhead is already waiting for us. We just need to be healthy here and live long for Krishna while we're here. You're not going to get opportunity in the spiritual world to go Harinam because everybody is devotee there. But what I'm saying is, while we are here, um, um, be enthusiastic and live long for Krishna consciousness. We are not here to just eat and sleep. Follow the orders of your Guru. Your Guru Maharaj is worked just as hard as Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada works just as hard, uh, so hard, and because of his hard work, we have your Guru Maharaj. So we had to follow the, the previous Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, to spread Krishna consciousness. So, you know, there's no such thing as lazy disciples. Those who are good disciples, they are qualified to become a Guru. Isn't it? That's why Kadamba Maharaj is a very exemplary devotee, an Acharya actually. Acharya is one who sets by his own example. So that we eat big, big pusharam and go to sleep, we have to be active. And Maharaj was very active. Sometime I was, so I was sitting with him, he said, I have this schedule, that schedule. He didn't, have, he didn't give himself a little bit of time to relax. And he, he said he had cancer, doctor told him he has to relax, sleep more. He said, no, no, I don't have time. He went and hurry now. So I said, Maharaj, you need to relax. He said, no, no, I am not here to relax. Or I'm going to be here. Even last few days before he died, he was chanting Japa. And, and preaching. And that's what Prabhupada did. So Prabhupada was preaching to the last breath. And so this is our, um, our, our, um, uh, bless, uh, our blessing unto us. That how fortunate we are. That these are living examples. These devotees are living examples. We talk about 5,000 years ago. Ram, Lord Rama's time, Krishna's time. Today! We have Srila Prabhupada not long ago, and we have our Acharyas today, just recently, showing us the example how to become Krishna. We don't have to look elsewhere. Someone is just saying, read Prabhupada's books. If you read every word in Srila Prabhupada's books, if you can know every word in Srila Prabhupada's books, then you can read other books. So, this is how we have to be Krishna conscious. And Kadama Karan Maharaj is a very strong person to spread Krishna consciousness. So we don't have to look elsewhere. We have these spiritual masters today, right now. They're living examples. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Prabhu. Um, it's quite interesting that, uh, you know, both uh, Ramaru Prabhu and, and Prabhu, Prabhu both met. Um, you know, Kadama Kanana Maharaj was, you know, a very wonderful example of the fact that he was not a Prabhupada disciple, but was able to really deeply realize the instructions of Srila Prabhupada and follow the process with great determination and focus and apply that process that Srila Prabhupada gave in his perfect example, you know, right to the very end of even and how to how to leave this world. And so it's, you know, so much so that uh, Keshava and I each year, we, we uh, are in Mayapur at Srila Prabhupada's Tirubhav. And there was one year that Kadama Kanana Maharaj was there uh, also. And in, the, in Srila Prabhupada's Samadhi, 
during the Tirubhav um, program, it came time for the the at uh, the arti, and you know you can imagine in Mayapur there's quite quite a lot of Prabhupada disciples, you know in in this program, and they turned to Kadama Kanana Maharaj and asked him to actually do the arti to Srila Prabhupada and the Samadhi on his Tirubhav, which is a wonderful. Um, Example to show that, um, you know, you people say that Kadama Kandana Maharaj was a Prabhupada man, and even, you know, um, Prabhupada's disciples themselves could see this, and and out of of um, affection and and understanding, allowed Kadama Kandana Maharaj the honour to actually do the arti with them present. On 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 um, Shula Prabhupada's Tirubhav, it was it was very um, yeah. As as a disciple, it was quite moving and and very inspirational to show. As as Rambaru uh, Prabhu had said that we can also it's it's not just for Shula Prabhupada's disciples of that. We can also everything is there, and we just need to absorb and to read and to really um, realize the instructions and the the perfect example that Srila Prabhupada has given because we can see His Holiness Kadama Kanana Maharaj has applied this principle and he too has also been able to perfect his life and even, you know, right to the very end in his passing, give a wonderful example for us all. Uh, Russell, would you like to say something? We're all going to hear from the disciples. You're happy to? Yeah. You, yeah, we can? We go to, yeah, and then if we have time, we can come back if that's, yeah? Okay, so I'd like to, Pretty Lakshana, would you like to say some words? Yeah? Would you like to stand up at the front, or would you like me to give you the microphone and you, you stand up front? Sorry, pretty luxury. Yeah, you can take take that chair I've been sitting on. That's fine. In 2007, October, in the evening, um, Kadam Kanan Maharaj was in the Melbourne Temple Hall, and he was giving a class. And there were only three devotees there listening. And yet, he was giving the class with so much enthusiasm and so much devotion that, like as if it was a hall full of devotees. And he, he went on and he explained um, a lot of um, shlokas from there, and I was listening to his philosophy, and I was listening how he, it was flowing so naturally from him. That was the first time when a thought had crossed in my mind, oh yes, I want him as my spiritual master. So it's a, it's a long relationship that we have with him, and I have to today remind myself again and again that my dear spiritual master may have left the planet but my relationship with him is eternal. And um, he, by nature, he's very approachable and very down to earth. And in those initial days, he used to just be in the temple courtyard, walking around, sitting on the bench, and anybody could come up to him and ask him questions. And um, Foolish as I was, I would walk up to him and ask him all sorts of philosophical questions, thinking that I also knew something about the scriptures and about God. But he would so kindly um, answer my questions without hurting my ego. And then finally, when I was, it was, 
I was always convinced it was just that lecture that it struck me. He's my Guru Maharaj. I have to take um, shelter of him. And yet I still had so many questions and he would so patiently answer those questions. And then in 2009, he was in, um, he came to Chandigarh. If some of you may not know, it's a city in North India. It's a union territory. It's about five hours drive from Delhi. So he came there for Lord Jagannath's Rath Yatra. And from there, my hometown is only an hour and a half away. So I requested him to come there. So he had a car full of his South African disciples with him. And I just had to ask him, and he so readily agreed. I just couldn't believe myself that he is going to come to my house. And he did. And there he lectured in, um, in Hindi. That was the first time I also came to know that he can speak fluent Hindi along with other five to six European languages that he can speak. And last year, in September, he, when he, in, he already knew that he was going to leave. He, he has this sickness. We all knew about it. He had called all of us disciples. He requested if we could come to um, Vrindavan at Radhashtami. So um, we went there. My mother and her sister, who always accompany me to Vrindavan, um, uh, were also there with me. And there, Guru Maharaj, on one of the parikramas, um, we went to see him and he spoke to my mother. And he reminded my mother that in 2009, I had come to your house and I had had paranthas at your place. And I couldn't believe myself because we had never spoken about it after that event, and then nor my mother. We, almost would have forgotten about it, but we were pleasantly surprised that something that happened 12 years ago, he so vividly remember, and my mother is not even his disciple. But his kindness, his gratitude, it's so much kindness, it's just unlimited mercy that he's just a transparent wire media of the mercy of Srila Prabhupada that's flowing through to, from him to all of us. And then um, in 2017, when that was the first time his sickness was there, was you know, revealed, at that time his diet had become very restricted. And he, um, and I was, and I usually, I, I'm the, I have the greatest fortune to cook for him when he would come to Melbourne. He preferred to have one cook from then onwards because his health was sensitive. So it is easier to tell one person. And I became so conservative and um, conscious that he, he wasn't well or that we had to preserve his health somehow, that I was putting very little spices. So at one time he actually told me, you can put, you can put a little bit more salt. Like it was literally bland meals, I think I was feeding him. And, but he's, he's very lovingly, like a loving father instructing his daughter, he's actually, um, um, nurtured me, nurtured my spiritual life in Krishna consciousness. In the temple theater the year after, I think this was in 2010 or 11, he was giving a class one day and he stood up on the chair and he said that when we are all walking, we are walking and when as devotees when we walk, we still put more weight on our material leg. And he put his toe down and he said, that's it. Just one toe touching the ground, that's how much weight we put on our spiritual leg. And he said, we have to mature and put more weight on your spiritual leg. That was the message in that particular visit he, con he conveyed again and again. Put more weight on the spiritual leg. Don't wait for all the material arrangements to be perfect to take up Krishna consciousness. Seriously. And then in 2019, he, he's, he has always been very kind. He would um, make out time for darshans. And then I was uh, with him and during the conversation, he suddenly said, I may not be around forever. You must stay strong in your Krishna consciousness. I was really shocked by hearing that. And little did I know that I have to remind myself again and again that my relationship with him is eternal. Guru Maharaj, 
when I saw the last few days of how you, your strong determination and how you left your body, Parikshit Maharaj also had seven days. Parikshit Maharaj was also in the forest when he was with his um, ministers and he, um, he had lost his way and he was left alone. And then he saw this hut, you know, uh, a sage was there inside and he was meditating and he requested for food and water because he was hungry and thirsty for a couple of days. And then he, he became so bewildered that he had put a dead snake around the neck of the sage. But later on, when Parikshit Maharaj was told that he needs to hear in chants, for the last seven days, all Parikshit Maharaj had done was he could hear in chant, and then at that time he wasn't hungry and thirsty. He could just stay without anything, and he continued to hear, and then on the seventh day, as we all know, the Takshak bird came and took him. And when I see you, you set a perfect example of how when you felt your body couldn't take food anymore and it was your organs were not functioning properly, you took a conscious decision to just drink water and be on electrolytes. And you continued like that. Why I say this is because since I've been cooking for you all these years, and if I would ever get late serving you prashadam, you would tell me, you know, I get very hungry. You must bring food on time. You know, and I've been chastised a few times. And then I know that now I know that you said that just to help me understand as a disciple that when we are serving our Guru Maharaj, we should do it with a lot of discipline and we should be punctual. Time is of essence when we serve a spiritual master. And now you were only on water for so many days. And then in the, in the last few days, it was hard, becoming hard for you to even chant your rounds. And Jaidvata Maharaj even told you that if you chant one beat, I will consider one round. And if you chant on 16 beats, that those are your 16 rounds. Because you were, it was so hard for, even to, for him even to breathe. But he said, if I will do this, then my disciples will do the same. I want to teach my disciples that when you, even if, Sickness, disease, any kind of problem, you must keep chanting. You have to chant your 16 rounds every day. And Guru Maharaj, I think this, I, when I heard this and I felt that, which yogi can do better than this? We hear that yogis that have the option to leave their uh, body when they want. But when I see you, I see that you are much more powerful than a yogi. You chanted and danced your way. And then in the end, you were able to control your mind and senses just like any yogi could do. And you have gone back to Krishna. And from all the lectures that I've heard of yours, there's one thing that, that strikes me distinctly and that I know is so dear to you. Chanting has always been very important to you. In various different lectures, you have spoken about the importance of chanting and you've actually given clear instructions when to chant. So, Guru Maharaj, you have said, cha cha rounds chanted before Mangala Arti are ecstatic rounds. Rounds chanted before Darsh Darshan Arti are good rounds. Rounds chanted during the day are okay rounds, and rounds chanted after dark are dark rounds. So, yeah, he's, this, that was a joke, but of course, he, what he meant was that we need to become more serious about chanting and never after dark. So, I have so many other, so many more memories. He has left behind for me so much personal association he gave me, so much personal instructions that he've give, he's given me. If I was to share all of them, we'd probably not probably the end of the program and I'll be the only one talking. But at the end, I just want to say that as you have mentioned that you're waiting for all of us on the other side, so with folded hands, you are my Melbourne congregation, you are my congregation, I request you all to please bless me that I can seriously and sincerely follow the instructions of my spiritual master and become a worthy disciple. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Priti Lakshana. Um, I would request any other disciples, please. Anyone who would like to, any order. Tribunga Sham, would you like to say something? Or, yeah, please? Yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there another, any other disciples who feel that they are up for Chaitanya Leela? Please come. Chaitanya Leela, thank you. But it's completely, um, you know, there is no obligation as a disciple if you don't want to, if you're not comfortable. We've got many other devotees here that can share realizations, their experiences. So, you know, it's. Um, it's it's completely fine. It's it's what we're all comfortable. We're just here to glorify Maharaj, so you know that's that's no problem. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Um, I met Maharaj first time in I think it was 2013, um, and it was at Melbourne Uni. Um, a program organized in that time by the yeah, the devotees that ran the programs at Melbourne Uni and yeah, Nanda Mandir Prabhu was there. Um, yeah, just little I knew that he wouldn't become my spiritual teacher and even the meaning or a guru at that time. I just, but it, I still remember the the talk and yeah, it was about the three modes of material nature. So. Um, yeah, it's, as everybody has been saying, like the nature of Maharaj has been so approachable and, and friendly and <clears throat> also like just being able to be ourselves around him and, and ask any, yeah, anything from, from personal questions to, yeah, more philosophical and more. But um, yeah, just want, I kind of like trying to think about few a few past times so things that happened like um, I remember when in 2007 I 17 I was um, about to go to to India for the first time and and to go to Mayapur but somehow that he was coming and I kind of like, I will I will miss his visit in Melbourne and I like, oh no this can't happen and and then he was in Canberra and and I managed just to go and see him there and, and ask for his permissions to get into the dam. Um, but yeah, luckily, like probably two months later, I, I, I was lucky to be there for a few months, so I, I got his association later on. And as Atulia was saying, and like if we, if anybody was trying to follow him during his Japa walks, like forget it. Like seriously, he's just like so much energy. Um, and then in 2019, we we went in the Parikram as well, and um, like one of the hardest bit lately, like accepting that he's gone, is like, oh God, we're not gonna be able to go again in Parikrans with him. I think it's been one of the hardest thing, but I, I feel really lucky that I managed to go at least once. Um, and that Parikram around Ma Jaipur was just the most amazing one. And, and I won't remember the name of the temples on top of my head, but it was one that is quite, it's, it's pretty, it's a lot of stone, it's pretty rocky, and he would just go down like that, like nothing happened, and you know, we all held in behind, like, oh my God, we're gonna fall. Um, <clears throat> now, like, even last year, again, like, for some reason, like, I was kind of like out of track with the schedules, and I had already organized a trip when he had called on the disciples to go and, and meet them in Brindavan, but, um, again, luckily, I, I was able to go and see him in, in November, and, and I remember hearing from someone that he he was into the fisherman friends things to help him with his call and sore throat or something. So I got him a few ones, and and I said, oh, I I just brought this for you, but I bet everybody else has been, you know, probably everybody else heard the same. You might have a pile of them, and. 
And he said, yeah, of course, I have a few ones. And I just gave it to him, like, but this is the one I can't have because he has some ingredients on it. I was like, oh, God, shouldn't I at least research more what he could have? And, and it was fun. I kept one in my bag, and I was just thinking, like, oh, whatever, we all just holding something back that we don't want to give everything to Krishna. Um, and, it, and it was one in case that I could seek, so selfish. And then I gave that one to him, like, this one I can't have. And then he kept that one, but he threw the other ones on me. <coughs> it was just one. But that's just like that mood, like that so approachable and that. Um, um, I was really, uh, it's like in a dual situation lately. And, and I appreciate we had a, a card family meeting recently with Keshava Prabhu, and he helped me to to understand a little bit, like, because a part of me was like, I don't want to see him suffering as he's doing in the last moments of his life. But also, like, you don't want to feel like, oh, you want to see him going. Of course, no. But it's like Kechava Prabhu was explaining, like, spiritual life is always like that duality involved. Um, <clears throat> and, but also we reflect in every of the last updates that we got. It's like it's so much into that, so much the, the realization that he was sharing in his journey of departing, the, the instructions, and even the last word that his solinus Jai Weta Maharaj said that Maharaj pronounced it clearly. It was like mission. That was the last word that he said that they could clearly understand what he said. Um, and it's just really making sure that we we type into that and that we hopefully can carry this message as big or with, uh, with so much dedication and determination as we did. And yeah, just in front of all of you, in front of just oh, Holiness, Jai Waita Maharaj and Prabhupada, just pray that, that I can be of some use in trying to carry these missions and, and be a good representative of his legacy. His Holiness Kadamba Kanana Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Thank you, Tanya Leela. Uh, Tribanga Shamprabhu. I'll keep try and keep it more point to point, not to uh, make it too emotional. Otherwise, I'll have to run again. So, firstly, before I start, I'd like to thank my Shiksha Gurus. Okay, in Jagannath Ram Prabhu, Yogesh Prabhu. Okay. So, get Maharaj. It was always uh, one thing that struck me always. Every meeting, every interaction, he was a thorough Prabhupada man. And completely sold out to him. So many of you have mentioned that he never met Prabhupada. That's a, shows a clear example that it's not critical to have met Prabhupada. His instructions are with us in his books, in his lectures, and he's in followers. So he always was a... And uh, hearing his memorial in Vindavan a couple of days ago, hearing from so many uh, the Prabhupada disciples and so many of his followers, I suddenly, somehow, I was realizing that uh, Maharaj more and more after he left, and how much he actually meant to everyone. He was very. There were some parallels being drawn for a Maharaj with Prabhupada, and with respect, uh, there was calling, calling like a how he was also a man of uh, think big. The clarity he was carrying, the the decisive, the strength how he delivered big things. He was a people person. He traveled all around the world, highly talented in the multi-skills, not only in the managerial skills, kirtan skills, uh, knowledge he was carrying. And he was such a strong man, but he always told us, at times we were getting carried away with uh, trying to deliver things, driving things. And uh, Jagannath Mabu also tells us sometimes we also need to be not just project-oriented, but people-oriented. So Maharaj always stressed that, and he's a, even in the final few lectures, he, we need to be kind with our uh, people who we come across. We need to be more inclusive. Even though he had such, delivered so much, achieved so much, 
but he was still, um, people meant a lot to him. Accept as they are and work with people. He, uh, a lot of times I could see that uh, things are not getting delivered to his liking, but he was very, very patient with all of us. He, uh, first time I, when I was going to like uh, serve Prashad to him in one occasion, I was very, very hesitant, uh, not feeling so confident how to serve Prashad to a, like a spiritual master or a sannyasi. And after first meeting, I realized, no, this is how, it's not about me being too hesitant, no, serve the sannyasi or a spiritual master with full confidence so that they don't feel uncomfortable while uh, receiving Prashad. Uh, so a lot of instructions came from him. I was very fortunate in uh, many ways to receive a personal association with Maharaj. But uh, yeah, I think uh, just to go through a couple of uh, things I was uh, uh, reflecting back. Again, uh, right from the very beginning, uh, how he actually initially resisted the movement so much. He comes up with such a, has a unique sense of humor and come, tells us all those stories and people will laugh their heads off. And now when he made that decision to join the movement, that's when he completely committed himself, completely surrendered. And that's how he was able to work so like, quickly. He, like somebody said on the day two, he was a, the restaurant manager, became temple president. So I was hearing Jayad Bhatta Maharaj the other day and he was saying that how he actually served in Davan Temple, the uh, Prabhupada Samadhi. Then uh, it was a very difficult time for the movement and how when he took that, uh, the presidentship, how much he was actually working as the very, very strong like, um, mafia elements, saved so much uh, money for the movement and also practically saved the temple in, in that time, how he actually uh, protected or uh, like uh, reinvigorated the Sp Spanish Yatra, then the, the, some, the, the Pushpa Samadhi Mandir in Mayapur. He often told me like uh, sometimes uh, I don't really, I want to travel around preach, but the, somehow they find me in, term, in, in going out and uh, handling these uh, complex projects. So he was always uh, being a look, looked upon person, uh, to, like a go-to man for uh, so many of the management. And uh, more recently, he was working in the New York, uh, like a Brooklyn temple. Again, I think now it's in uh, reasonably good, good hands. It was going through a lot of difficulties. So he was, uh, in many ways, a go-to man for the ISKCON management too. One thing that also struck me and was very instructive for me, when uh, a few years ago, the 40 years of uh, Gornitai, how so many of... Uh, senior disciples, Prabhupada's disciples, Maharajis arrived. And uh, I apologize if I say anything inappropriate, but how I was uh, observed Maharaj, he immediately took a, like a, like a s humble position at that time, being a Maharaj, Sanyasi, spiritual master. And so many, he took them as a, it's an opportunity for me to serve the followers and disciples of Prabhupada. And I could see he was taking a bit of a uh, backstage all the time. At that time, he took, led like a long, long kirtans, sitting, sitting down and just uh, serving, serving the temple in that way. He was very appreciative and very, very instructive how to, uh, no, no matter what position you can attain, but uh, never forget like, uh, how to actually uh, deal with senior, senior disciples, senior, senior people. So it's very, very instructive. Uh, so he would never like had that uh, air about him. A lot of uh, in the last month or so in particular, so many people traveled to Vindavan, including myself, and uh, everybody was coming back and saying that uh, it's just hard to comprehend that Maharaj is terminally sick, the stage four cancer, in the, then the level of detail they have gone, and he doesn't look like he's even sick what to say of terminally, terminally ill, the energy he is carrying, the long kirtan he is holding in the Vindavan uh, Krishna Balram temple, and the way he still walks and talks and smiles and interacts with people. Is it really... So it was that kind of message, like a, once he get, get uh, 
that uh, sick again, he will be out for two or three days. As soon as he feels better, again come back and start to preach. Until the last episode when he decided finally that okay, now is the time that he will stop eating and uh, time to let go. But until then he was keep bouncing back, keep bouncing back. So it was just uh, unbelievable energy he was carrying, the strength he was carrying, the strength of character, strength of mind. One of the things that he also mentioned to us in the last uh, few months as to what he would like us to be. He definitely wanted us to become like a Shira Pauva man. To become a, like a soldier in Shira Pauva's army. Uh, the other thing that, uh, so he really wanted us to like uh, work in a way that we can actually serve the movement, think big deliver something big for the movement don't uh, don't stop yourself or don't be don't limit yourself just go out preach reach out so as all our shiksha gurus have been uh, quite at the forefront of it so it is uh, definitely about time for us to take these instructions more seriously uh, the best of our capacity and lift lift our game lift ourselves more one other thing that I also realized in uh, many, many years of association was he was very, very accommodating of his disciples, of the people he was coming across. But he was uh, equally hard on himself. He was very strict with his own sadhana. Like we all know like, how he used to get up like 1.30 in the morning every, every day. Never miss a Mangal Aarti. Like I finish the rounds before even the Mangalati starts. Mangalati finishes, then the reading starts. Before the actually sun, sun comes out, before the managerial side of things comes out, the reading is done, the listening is done, and the chanting is finished. That's how he actually planned. And, uh, but he was uh, very, very accommodating of his own disciples, of his uh, followers. He was like uh, give all the leeway, all the, uh, always encourage to become stronger, but never like a, uh, demand too much, too much of high standards in that way. So in that way, he was a, he shown a lot of mercy upon all of us. And uh, finally, I'd just like to say that, uh, uh, like I said, I was, I was fortunate to get some uh, whatever little association I got with Maharaj. And I truly feel, especially after he has left, that uh, I am his eternal disciple and servant. <laughs> Your mercy case, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Tribal. Um, I'll invite Navanita Leela to come up next, if that's okay. Uh, as she's coming forward, I just share that uh, we now have some nice images of Maharaj throughout his lifetime up on the on the screens, and uh, and also to also you know uh, as Tribhangashan was saying, he really emphasised on pushing forward very strongly with the movement, and throughout his his devotional life, he was sent into quite some uh, challenging situations within you know, to keep our, our, our movement forward, going forward when, when the uh, Yatra in Spain was, you know, having big difficulties, he was sent there and to oversee that. He was sent to New York to also help with the Brooklyn uh, project and the temple there and, and you know, Brindavan and so, and then into South Africa and he really helped with, with the preaching there in Soweto, beginning the Soweto Ratha Yatra and, and projects like that. So that's a really good point that it was, you know, no project was too hard. His commitment was to just keep pushing forward. And even he would come to um, Hare Krishna Valley and he would come for a, a program we would invite him, and he was always so very accommodating. And then at the end of the uh, the end of the program, he comes to to me and gives me an envelope with uh, 
with some money in it. I'm like, it's, he goes, this is not quite right. <laughs> Why are you giving me the envelope? He said, this is my donation to the cows of Hare Krishna Valley. This is my way of doing some go saver. So, you know, it was always very supportive of, of the different projects. But now I will give the microphone to Navanita Leela. Hare Krishna. I feel extremely fortunate to be to have the shelter of such a great personality, which has a very glorious life and um, very glorious death. He he was completely selfless. I remember once in in Jaipur Parikrama, there was an issue with the bus, and everyone was without room, like in the living area of the hotel and one old lady was like very disturbed and he saw that and he said, okay, no problem. My room is there, it was the only room available, just take it and take some rest. So he was outside with all his disciples harassing him and he was very peaceful and he, he was really very compassionate. You know, instead of uh, going to rest himself, he gave the room to someone. So he, he was very selfish, selfless all the time, he lived for others for the spiritual benefit of others. And uh, in that same parikram, I remember uh, he surrendered. We went to Madan Mohan Temple, and uh, the doors were just closed. The darshan was just closed, so it, the next darshan was in six hours. So anyone would say, like, okay, let's, let's go to the next, next station. But he stayed there, and he did kirtan for that six hours. Because that was the parikrama dedicated for his disciples, and he wanted to give all the mercy. So for six hours, we kept hearing Maharaj, and it was an ecstatic kirtan. I think we cannot forget. I, I want to see the video and remember again those those pastimes. Also, yeah, he he's showing always his surrender, his um, love and devotion to Shila Prabhupada. Once I when. I took darshan with him and I told him, I see many people losing their faith in their guru and I'm very, very afraid it happens to me. And he said with all humbleness, I'm, I'm not like Srila Prabhupada, I'm not Srila Prabhupada, but one thing I can assure that is I'm in, at the feet of Srila Prabhupada and this, that's the only thing I can offer you. So that mood of humbleness just uh, touched very much my heart. He's not artificially humble, he's really humble. Once also in Radhadesh, he, uh, in his Vyasa Puja, before all his disciples starting glorifying, he starts saying words like, well, actually I haven't done enough for Srila Prabhupada, like I, I don't do the things to full extent, and I was thinking like how someone that has dedicated full life, energy, consciousness, words, mind to Srila Prabhupada can say that. And that's his, his humbleness. Um, and his mood is always compassionate also. He is, his mood is all-inclusive. He wants to give mercy to everyone. Uh, people with different nature, different character, different inclinations. He wants to give the chance to engage those things in Krishna consciousness. Sometimes he says, like, my devotees, uh, uh, my disciples are a bit uh, eccentric sometimes. <laughs> we, we find like no different dress, different uh, mood, but still he wants to engage everyone in Krishna consciousness, and I that mood is, is something we, we we should really keep in mind in our heart. Uh, I I remember also once I I he usually gives lectures that can be like um, sound for everyone, you know, that everyone can get related to it. Once he gave a class that it was very strict, very straightforward. If you are not uh, doing something for Krishna at that moment, you're just wasting your life. It was very sharp. And after the class, I say, thank you, Maharaj. I like very much your class. And he just laughed and said, oh, I think I scare more than one. So, <laughs> he, he was uh, always uh, wanting people to take Krishna consciousness joyfully. Um, so he has all the qualities of a sadhu, he is compassionate with others, but he's very, very strict with his sadhana. We saw his, till his last time, he was uh, giving the life example for a lot of us to, to, fall, to, to follow, no, with no fearness of death, with full surrender, and give our lives, our mind to Krishna. 
So I'm very fortunate to have the shelter of such a personality and we have that mercy always coming. The problem is that sometimes I don't take it, so we just have to take it and yeah, keep it in our heart and do something for it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Navanita Lila. Um, I'll invite Radhika to come and speak on behalf of her family, if that's okay. And I'd just like to also add with Navanita, with her offering, that she said that one of the things in, in the lead up to Maharaj's departure, he said in one of our, our uh, disciple meetings that, um, you know, when you think of certain personalities, they have a legacy. There is a legacy there, you know, Radhanath Maharaj has a certain legacy, a mood, you can feel that. Or um, Jai Pitaka Maharaj has, has a legacy, a certain mood. And what Kadama Kanana Maharaj had expressed was that um, he liked to think that um, for him and his legacy, it would be that uh, he created space for individuality within Krishna consciousness. He created a space, he, he embraced and welcomed disciples and encouraged them to serve and to practice in Krishna consciousness with their individuality. And um, I think when you look at his disciples um, and, the, and the different personalities, you can see that, that um, he, has, he has really created that space and in, in, in his support and instruction, he always encouraged us to do uh, our service according to our nature and, you know, um, was very merciful in that, that he did create space for all sorts of different um, people to become, you know, uh, his disciple and and devotees of Krishna. So Radhika, you go. It's okay. Just so everyone can see you. I will stand up. Hare Krishna. Um, so I'm just speaking on behalf of mum and myself and our family. Um, so we first met Maharaj um, 12 years ago, 12 to 13 years ago in Melbourne at Sadhu Mati Mataji's place. Um, we've had the privilege of knowing Maharaj for a very long time, but that was the first time we actually had a proper conversation with him. And I think at that moment, mum knew that um, that is her spiritual master. Um, and when we met him at that time, we didn't know that he speaks Hindi. Um, and then when we spoke to him, he was speaking it so fluently, like he was just um, speaking it like, you know, like a normal Indian person would be speaking Hindi. Um, and over the years, over the 12, 13 years, we've had the great fortune to serve Maharaj um, in multiple ways and blessed to have his association. He has been very approachable and compassionate towards all his disciples. Although I'm not a direct disciple of him, he has poured so much love and kindness to me. And I've had the opportunity to serve him in many ways. We've had the great fortune for him to come to our place and serve him in multiple other ways. I think um, a pastime that I remember is um, when Maharaj was in Melbourne, um, upstairs with his Giriraj. He was doing puja and um, all the boys were there and all the girls were downstairs. And then he was asking, where are all the girls, you know? Um, and then he straight away said, um, I think, to Bhakta Vatsala Prabhu, go call them up, you know, why are they downstairs? Um, and then we had the opportunity to come upstairs and, you know, be a part of the Giriraj Puja and um, share that moment with him. Um, and so I think it's definitely a huge loss for his disciples and his well wishes. But I think it's a constant uh, reminder that he's eternally with us. Um, when I spoke to my own Gurudev, His Holiness Indra Swami, about the departure of um, Maharaj, there's one thing that he said to me, which I think is really nice and something I wanted to share with you all, um, which I think will be really beneficial. 
Um, he said that nowadays one can remain close to one's guru through social media. That is significant because according to Shastra, the main and most important connection with one's spiritual master is through sound vibration, transcendental sound vibration. The nature of life is that in time, that person may accept responsibilities elsewhere in the world or depart this world. So most important is the heart. And not only the disciple's heart, it's also important that our guru's heart is such that he knows us, loves us, and deeply desires our spiritual welfare, which is eternally alive. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Is there any other disciples who would like to? Yeah, please. Thank you, Mataji. Um, Hare Krishna, everyone, and uh, a warm welcome. And uh, I'm really uh, thankful that you're all here. I have never ever spoken in front of such a huge gathering, but I was thinking if I don't really speak now, I think uh, it would be really heavy on my heart because I'm feeling that heaviness since last three days. Uh, so my association with uh, Guru Maharaj has been uh, very less or very minimal. I met him only twice, but uh, I would say, um, that was the like, you know, most memorable moments of my life. Guru Maharaj has actually, I mean, because of the you know, Kali Yuga memory, when someone, especially my uh, Siksha Guru asked me, like, what are the two questions Sukhde, uh, Parishit Maharaj has asked uh, Sukhde Goswami, he says, like, how to live and how to leave. So my Guru Maharaj has actually taught us and he has prepared us since last 12 months when he has actually announced for the first time about his uh, situation of his health. He has prepared us so much that we have to be strong enough after he departs as well. And uh, he has been taking us uh, through so many sessions for the last three months. He was actually preparing us, but when the day arrived, I was completely shattered, I was completely devastated. I couldn't hold myself and uh, we had we held a Kirtan session in the temple as well. So that picture, actually, when I see in the temple, I was completely down. I couldn't speak. I was just crying. The photo was actually placed right in front of Radha Vallabhatitis. So I could see that uh, the doors of the temple have been actually open. I felt that the, the doors of Vrindavan actually have opened for Guru Maharaj with his uh, departure. And the position of the photo was actually placed in such a way that uh, his head was actually at the feet of Radha Vallabha. So I felt that uh, he has actually reached his destination. But there was a lot of separation. There was a lot of uh, emotion that we were, we were going through. Especially myself, I'm talking to myself. I felt like, is it, uh, is it really fair for all the disciples to go through? Because uh, Maharaj has definitely reached his destination. But what about us? who is going to actually take care of us. And I know that, you know, we have a lot of instructions from Guru Maharaj, but is it actually enough? And is it, uh, is it good enough for all of us to be supported? I think, uh, I think definitely we have to follow those instructions. And uh, this is nothing but like Vani Seva. Uh, for me, someone who is not really matured in Bhakti, it might be really hard, but with the help of my, you know, senior uh, God family and all the senior Vaishnavas here, uh, I should get some, uh, I should get some, you know, uh, help whenever I need some, uh, you know, uh, solace or comfort. And uh, Guru Maharaj has actually, uh, you know, given us so many instructions. And all these instructions should actually help us in the dark times of our life. There are a lot of things that, that I should actually put an end to what the things have been so far. And I should actually start on those things which uh, make makes my Guru Maharaj happy as well. So I'm really thankful uh, that we have a wonderful family and the association here who would be, you know, uh, guiding us all through. I uh, met Guru Maharaj, the most recent uh, darshan I had was in uh, September uh, during Radhashtami. That was my second and I think that was the last. And since, and hence, I was like really emotional when I was actually, uh, you know, going away or when I had that uh, time slot of uh, 15 or 20 minutes that I get to speak to Guru Maharaj. You know, sometimes uh, we, all, we all wanted to speak to uh, our Maharaj or maybe 
you know, in a general life as well, we wanted to speak to, uh, speak to someone who really, whom you really admire. But when it comes to that point, you wouldn't have a word. It happens with me so many times that, that I wanted to, you know, speak to His Grace Jagannath Ram Prabhu. But when I stand next to him, all I can see is uh, just tears in my eyes. I can't really speak. So it happened to me in the same way that when I saw Guru Maharaj, I was like completely, uh, you know, in tears. And his body was like, you know, so much of, his body has got so much of effulgence. Uh, when one of the disciples opened the door, he said like, you know, why are you guys here? I said like, you know, we want to get a darshan of Guru Maharaj. And he, he was so merciful that he came to the door and he, you know, he welcomed. And uh, there was, uh, you know, so much of effulgence like, you know, Brahman. I, <laughs> I couldn't see Guru Maharaj. It's so much of light. And he was so merciful that he spent like 20 or 25 minutes with us. And uh, yeah, we asked, some, asked for some uh, instructions as well. But he said all his instructions are instructions for everyone. There's nothing like personal instructions. But one thing he has actually... Uh, made it for sure is uh, books are the basis. So even though you are like, you know, Grihastha or even though you are uh, a Brahmachari, there is no exemption. Everyone has to read Srila Prabhupada's books so that you will be, uh, you know, the strong leaders of uh, this mission and support as well. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, His Holiness Kadamakaran Maharaj Ki Chai. Um, I'd like to uh, invite Bhakta Prabhu, if you'd like to um, share some words with us all. Thank you. Bhakta Prabhu has been a long time friend with Kadama Kanana Maharaj. They even, um, when I was telling you about the uh, farm at Yugodadesh, there were even times then that serving together. So he will have nice to share. Oh. Okay, sorry, if, if we can, yeah, yep, more people are coming in as the program's rolling on. If we can mm, fill up the space as much as we can up the front so people can sit. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna, everybody. Uh, I'm not feeling 100% today, so you'll just have to bear with me. I've got a little bit of vertigo, so I'm a bit dizzy. That's why I've got the stick to sort of prop me up. No, no, I'm fine. I prefer to stand up at all, yeah. Actually, Atulia, I saw a photo the other day when you were so young. <laughs> And you were there at our place with Maharaj in a very casual sort of way. We saw that. Did you see that one? Yeah. <laughs> so Bhakti and I have known Guru Maharaj, Kadamba Kanana Maharaj, for about 40 years. About 40 years. And um, everything that has been mentioned, his good qualities by his disciples, is so true. He's just the most amazing man. And I'm so fortunate to have called him and call him my friend. And he was a friend. We're both Dutch. Bhakti and I are Dutch and so is he. So at one stage he actually, we had the opportunity to go back to my homeland in Amsterdam and where Maharaj was from. And so he gave us a guided tour of Amsterdam. Uh, we went to all the different museums and the back streets and all that and Maharaj was so wonderful. So he's been my friend. Um, I, I can go on about his qualities, but it's just, you've all said it, he's just amazing. Actually, the other day, Ojas V. Prabhu gave a wonderful class at our centre. And one of the things that he specified was that a devotee grows in Krishna consciousness. You start off and then you sort of develop slowly. We were fortunate enough to see that growth in Kadamba Kanana Maharaj. You know, we both started off as Grihastas, him and his wife, and Bhakti, and, and my, uh, my and Bhakti, my wife. And we were just Grihastas, Grihastas hanging out. But he had such a mission, and he was so determined. And, you know, eventually he grew in status, took up so much responsibility, and then finally he took sannyas. And uh, from there on in, he just rocketed to the status of a pure devotee. 
he was just completely surrendered to Srila Prabhupada, to his Guru Maharaj, to the movement. The one thing that, and he's my mentor, he's my guide and my mentor, his father has also been my friend. The one thing that always sticks with me, and it was mentioned the other day also on one of his comments, was that it's okay to be a Vaishnava and follow the strict principles, get up early in the morning, uh, have association, read and everything, but a true Vaishnava has heart, has heart, loves people. And that was there in, in Guru Maharaj. He really had that quality of being kind and loving to everyone. So if we can emulate that, that's what we should do. So anyway, in that class, he was saying that um, you know, we aspire to be Vaishnavas and we watched him grow and he was just such an amazing person. I'm so glad to have called him my friend, <laughs> even though he used to stir me quite a lot. Every, when he took sannyas, <laughs> every time he saw me, he said, Bhakta? <laughs> I said, Maharaj, I'm a grihasta for life. Ah, every single time. And then he had that catchphrase. What's he used to say? Um, what to do, what to do, Bhakta? <laughs> what to do, what to do? I said, Maharaj, I'm always a grihasta this lifetime. We'll see. <laughs> We'll see. Kadamba Kana Maharaj, I miss you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Bhakta Prabhu. I'd like to invite uh, Jagannath Ram Prabhu to come up and say some words. <clears throat> it's very nice, as <clears throat> Bhakta Prabhu said, about having that, that heart and that kindness the pastimes that Navanita Leela mentioned about when we went on Parakram, we went to Jaipur and we had such a <clears throat> interesting pastime when it came to the buses. We had, uh, we literally were 20 minutes out of Brindavan on the way to Jaipur and uh, one of the buses broke down, which Asesha and I were on. And it was just from there, it was just this whole leela around the buses and this, the organiser of the buses, we called him the bus demon. It was just this whole ongoing pastime with buses and, and then to come home from Jaipur. We stayed in Jaipur and then coming back to Brindavan and then the bus demon decided, that's it, you're not having my buses. And we're all here in, in Jaipur needing to get back to Brindavan. And so we had to run around and organise these new buses. But Guru Maharaj stayed. You know, he could have got a, a driver to take him back to Brindavan and we would sorted out in time. Uh, no, he stayed to the very end. He stayed until every single one of us was on a bus and home. And, you know, we were on the last bus and it, it took a long time. And as Navanita Leela said, like, when one Mataji was not feeling well, he gave his room and said, you rest, ladies, you can have my room. And he was there right through to the end, but he did not leave until every single devotee had got on a bus and was headed back to Brindavan safely. Just one example of many. But now I'd like to give the microphone to Jagannath Ram Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Sorry, I've written something, because if I start speaking without writing, then I'll go on and on. So, just wanted to be as brief as I can. Um, thank you very much. At the outset, uh, you know, uh, Yamanulila and I would like to thank all the glorious uh, Diksha disciples of uh, His Holiness Kadamakan Swami Maharaj. Many of you are like uh, family to us, um, so thank you for giving this opportunity to express our love and gratitude unto Him. I'm sure most of you will agree that our love for any of these glorious disciples of Srila Prabhupada has no real bearing on whether they are our Diksha Guru or they may not be our Diksha Guru. Amongst many, there are two primary reasons for this, uh, when I was thinking this morning about this, that we are primarily a Shiksha Sampradaya, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, Diksha really in that sense doesn't matter, it's a relationship of the heart. Number two is, some people are just loved by everyone because they are exemplary human beings. And like Srila Prabhupada sings, you know, every day in the morning we hear, Dheera Dheera Jana Priyav. The six Goswamis were very dear to everyone because they had very affectionate and loving dealings with everyone around them. In our view, His Holiness Kadamakan and Swami Maharaj was one such soul. 
It is very difficult for anyone not to be positively and spiritually impacted by his divine association, be it a direct disciple or be it not. And, and that was Maharaj's hallmark. There are many aspects of his personality that we fondly remember about Maharaj, each of which has left a deep impression in some corner of our hearts. There are three that I would speak to very briefly. First and foremost, the very personal nature of his dealings, as Atulya Mataji also mentioned, and many other uh, uh, devotees mentioned before, Maharaj seemed to have time for everyone. And d during that time, the connection and message will be very, very personal. I remember, if my, I remember very vividly that my parents, uh, if they at all remembered one personality, beyond their own Siksha, Diksha Guru, it was His Holiness Kadama Kanan Swami Maharaj. They invariably asked me in India, every visit of mine, if he continues to visit uh, Melbourne. And uh, he was not even their Diksha Guru, but they fondly cherished loving conversations that he had uh, with them in every meeting of his. The second one is that Maharaj had an excellent uh, sense of humor through which he can communicate very deep aspects of our Krishna conscious philosophy with, with utmost ease. Sometimes, owing to my dull head, I would uh, understand what he said only months or years down the line. I remember Maharaj in a Srimad Bhagavatam class in the temple said, All ashramas are meant for purification. In Grihastha ashram, our purification may come through our children. In other words, our children will make us realize that we are not the supreme controllers. <laughs> they make us humble. And he said that in his quintessential style of looking over his spectacles. And then with a tilted head and his side smile, he said, what to do? <laughs> At first, I just laughed and laughed. However, the gravity of how Grihasthashram is very purifying dawned on me much later and I often quote it during my teaching or preaching services. Third uh, point was Maharaja's humility and his encouragement to any endeavor. Personally for me and Yamanulila, he was the best Kirtanir in ISKCON. In fact, whenever I would get a slot to, because of devotee's mercy, <laughs> to give some, uh, to, to, to do some uh, Kirtan for Sri Sri Radha Vallabha, I will invariably practice his tunes. However, I remember we did a stage performance for Maharaj few years back in South Melbourne Hall, uh, where we sang a Kirtan for 15 odd minutes. I think it was myself, Vrajabha Prabhu, uh, Harini Mataji, and probably uh, Bhaktin Saumya. I think th this was the team at that time. And um, as Srila Prabhupada uh, would say, it, it was like a firefly showing, trying to show its uh, rays in front of the sun. And all of us were a bit tense because Maharaj was the chief guest of the program. However, after the Kirtan, uh, Maharaj came personally and told me, you sang very well. And, that, and he said that I wouldn't have been able to sing this tune any better. Obviously, you know, we have all been trained not to believe that. <laughs> Okay, so we knew it was not true, but just speaks volumes of how humble Maharaj was and more importantly, how encouraging Maharaj was of, 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 of any small endeavor that we do. In the initial days of his visits to Melbourne, when there weren't uh, so many disciples, um, we had the opportunity to ferry Maharaj to various Bhakti Vriksha programs. Today we feel very sad that we cannot have his Vapu association anymore. Uh, nevertheless, we hope to continue taking his Vani association so we can develop an iota of the missionary zeal with which he undertook so many responsibilities. Many of them are very dangerous responsibilities like Iskon Vrindavan president. Uh, all this he did for the uh, mission of Srila Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya. We now aspire to serve him by serving his glorious disciples whose infinite affection for him is very evident in their organizing such a beautiful Tirobhav Mahotsav for uh, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, thank you once again for this kind opportunity. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Prabhu. Um, now we will have to um, go to the next part of the program soon. So I've just got um, just a couple more people who have requested to speak, so, or to just to speak. So if they could briefly, Prabhu, was it you wanted to say something? Just a nice brief, like, and then we will we'll be moving on. So.
हरे कृष्ण नमो ओम विष्णु बधाय कृष्ण बिष्टा पुतले श्रीमती कदम नामिने आई वॉज वेरी टच बाय वॉट राम भुरु माता जी सैड एन आई एब्सोल्युटली एको वट शी सैड बिकॉज इन माई ओन पर्सनल रियलाइजेशन आई वुड से टीयर्स आर इज एन एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ लव लाइक गोपीज क्राइड फॉर कृष्ण सो यू सी सो मेनी पीपल डाइंग ऑन द रोड सो मेनी पीपल्स यू नो वी डोंट क्राई फॉर दैम बट वी क्राई फॉर सर्टन पीपल बिकॉज दैट इज एन एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ लव आई रिमेंबर बुरीजन प्रभु वंस यू नो वेन माई गुरु महाराज डिपार्टेड गुरु महाराज बुरीजन प्रभु सेड दैट वेन यू आर अ चाइल्ड यू क्राइड but you cried for yourself asking for attention but now just like your feet has been used for going to the temple your your tongue is used for the uh, speaking the holy name now your tears are being well used not for your own selfish reasons but for the love of your of god and and the spiritual master because spiritual master is embodiment of krishna only the other thing he said that was when we when we are small baby when we cry then water becomes like an ice and when uh when we cry for somebody else then this ice becomes water back so our steel framed heart when when we grow up our heart becomes steel framed because we are crying for ourselves but we when when we cry for krishna or when we cry for spiritual master this very steel frame heart becomes like a a molten a, a, like a, a, a like a molten uh, water another interesting twist and and my talk would not be more on the philosophical side it be more on the emotional catharsis um, i would say uh, so uh, like burujin prabhu speak to many other spiritual masters and one of my kula guru uh, is uh, uh, when i say kula guru all my family members were uh, <coughs> initiated by his holiness uh, gopal krishna maharaj so <coughs> i asked him if my guru maharaj is departed i have no chance of meeting him no chance why because i cannot go back to godhead because i'm so fallen i do mistakes again and again so what is the chance that i would ever meet him again it was one of the most profound answers that i have ever got in in my spiritual life i would say his holiness gopal krishna maharaj said actually one should not endeavor to go back to godhead one should endeavor that he comes back again and again whether in this planet or another planet to preach the holy name that is mahaprabhu's mood so who knows your guru maharaj may come back again in another planet and you fall down or go up again back in his shelter and that is the relationship that the disciple will have with guru again and again unless the disciple goes back to godhead i think you know for all uh, aspiring disciples or devotees uh, it is very important to feel that you are always sheltered and uh, reaching out to people like uh, rambaru mata ji said is extremely important in such scenario i have also written few things um, but mata ji asked me to be short and sweet i don't short Uh, i don't know how to be sweet but i'll try to be short uh, <clears throat> his holiness kadam kanan maharaj was the first um, western sanyasi i should say uh, that i met in melbourne um, and coming from a musical background it his kirtan would enthrall me um, the way i would express in a in a musical language um, it was like a perfect harmony and neither too loud that makes it a cacophony cacophony not too soft that needs keen ears even though i can barely dance but your kirtan immersed me in the nectar of holy name and my feet and head would start moving in synchronization 
I will skip uh, uh, some of the things because it's a long one. Uh, okay, so one of the statement that um, uh, my Guru Maharaj would say that you are the Sangeet Samrat of the Western world. So he would usually say that Loknath Maharaj is the Sangeet Samrat in India and uh, Kadam Kanan Maharaj is the Sangeet Samrat in the Western world. So that's one thing I do remember. However, today I see the weeping walls as its ears would be yearning to hear your crooning dulcet voice. Today we are all together and I'm told, or should I say, I'm asked to celebrate your glorious departure. Celebrate? I must say I found it very painful when I heard it for the first time for senior Vaishnavas. When I pressed harder, they said no to celebrate his union with Prabhupada and Krishna. I argued, departure means disappearance. Adrishya, how can I celebrate disappearance from my life? The conundrum is that you search for somebody when you know he's hiding, but when you're told he has disappeared, it's the most hopeless situation. Hmm. There is no hope. Gopis had a hope that they would find Krishna because Krishna is either hiding or say he was gone to Dwarka. But there is no hope when we know that he's completely disappeared. Therefore, it's more of a smaran from me when you are not here. And to think of 9th of March is remembrance of going out of temple and staring at the sky and asking the moon, are you blind? And then seeing the dam of tears flowing from your sincere disciples and then devotees telling them, we understand your pain. To comprehend anyone's loss or pain, one, ha one cannot understand unless he has been part in that journey of happiness, because pain is lack of happiness. Also to comprehend pain of separation, one must have left, must, one must have felt the same pain, else it's mere words. When my Guru Maharaj, who was my heart and soul, left this world, I understood the meaning of orphan. Today, um, Sorry. Uh, yeah. When I saw the tears in your disciples, I saw how the flowers of your tented garden were becoming like weeping creepers trying to find the wall of support. It made me how wonderfully you have nurtured your disciples as tears are insignia of love and separation. When I was in India, I had the opportunity to serve your exalted spiritual master, His Holiness Jayadvait Maharaj. I saw your spiritual master's also soft side and spoke so eloquently that how much he admires your enthusiasm and dedication. Today, I'm reminded of when Haridasa Prabhu left his body in Ganges and Srila Prabhupada had tears streaming. I was contemplating how Jay Advait Maharaj would be enduring his excruciating pain when he would visit you every day and hold your hand catharsis of your spiritual master, your sincere disciples and loving admirers that throng the streets of Rindavan is testament of how everyone loves you from the core of their heart. Yes, I will miss you, Maharaj. Everyone says you are there in your kirtans in Vani and you left wonderful message for your wonderful disciples before leaving this material world. Devotees would say, just follow his instructions and you'll meet him one day. I don't know whether I will have the qualification, honor, or opportunity to meet you again. But I'll try to rejig the memory, my memory, to live in those memories of Vani that goes into auto replay of Japa, or burble of waterfall of union, or crescendo of separation. Whilst I may shed tears at your loss intermittently, I fear, like everyone, I may get used to the pain and the eyes may dry up and may find some new mojo. So I would take a stroll sometimes and look at the moon and ask him if you are okay. As the moon is the juice of all fruits and vegetables in the material world, I would beg full moon for spiritual juice to trickle on my face. After the full moon had concluded its devotional service to Lord to, with you and ask if you and my Guru Maharaj are okay.
your foolish disciple, Shams Nikdas, Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. I'd like to just uh, invite a disciple, Kadama Kanana Maharaj disciple, Jeevananda Prabhu, to say a few words. And then if I can request Sukadev Prabhu, would you like to say something? That would be very nice if you, you can. Thank you. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Vasaya Bhutale Srimati Yamala Kadam Kanu Swami Iti Namine. Hare Krishna everyone. Um, keep it short, sorry I can't read my note as well now. Um, but I would like to share my experience uh, with Maharaj. Um, during my most challenging time of the life, having as well as even more challenging time of the life, having more demanding, having the kids more demanding at their age. Um, in those two ages uh, uh, of my, or part of my life, Maharaj has given me so critical instructions, which, uh, which, would, which would be beneficial for everyone, as well as it has been definitely transformative for me. Uh, and uh, the third point is about my last meeting with Maharaj. So when I, was, when I just had my uh, Bhakti Viksha completed on, under our uh, Siksha Guru, uh, Karanauta Prabhu and Yogesh Govind Prabhu, um, we were so inspired by listening to various Maharajis and somehow Kadan Kaman Swami Maharaj resonated us from his And we were listening to his Kirtan almost all the time uh, throughout the day whenever we get an opportunity. Uh, but having listening to that, our instruction to read uh, uh, his books as well as uh, listen to the lecture. But lectures were not something which was uh, resonating to me. It was so high standard. And, and I took up as a challenge that, okay, why I'm not able to understand what he's saying in my initial days. And, and I started uh, saying more and more. And, and that's how I started learning many other concepts that he was, he was giving, which was, like, uh, which was definitely impossible for me to understand in my earlier stage. But then we reached to a stage where Maharaj was giving a continuous instruction about reading, the importance of the reading the books. And that was the challenging part uh, um, where, where I was in my first phase of my life. And I was uh, approaching Maharaj uh, in a various uh, forums to understand how I can uh, address my challenge about reading the book. I, I'm not good at reading and, uh, and I, I can't sit and read for a long time. So Maharaj gave a really practical uh, understanding about um, if you have something as a backdrop, you always use technolo technology as your advantage, which helped me to start, uh, uh, like his, his idea was about audiobooks and, and making sure that you, you use those uh, avenues and, uh, and try to still read the books and, and focus and get the message as much as out you can get from our sastras. That was really transformative for me because since then I was trying to, uh, to reach, uh, and even Maharaj and his disciples shared some of the audiobooks for me as well, uh, uh, and which helped me to to read our, uh, our books and, and gain some part of it. Now we reached to the second stage of our life where we had the more demanding kids and uh, uh, under the, uh, the, te the temple's uh, Bhakti Viksha committee, they were inviting um, uh, the, the, uh, the members who wants to start the Bhakti Viksha or support the Bhakti Viksha. Uh, that was a time when I we and my, my wife, uh, uh, Hemangi Thakurani Devidasi, were very passionate to start Bhakti Viksha. And from May, we were approaching our Guru Maharaj for giving us some mercy and, and guidance about how we can be successful. I was not getting any messages reply back from uh, We started from May when this committee started uh, uh, coming together and, uh, and help us to train and give us the resources. And I was so disappointed by the time it reached to, uh, to um, July, August, uh, early August. And, uh, and it was very, very uh, disappointing for me that, okay, why Maharaj is not replying any of my messages? I even approached many of our, uh, our uh, God family members that, am I writing correctly? Am I, am I using my correct words to do something? And am I making any offensive while, we, while I'm asking these silly questions or something about starting Bhakti Briksha, and I was so desperate that, okay, why Maharaj is not responding? And um, Maharaj, Maharaj responded on the day when we were uh, under our uh, Siksha Guru, Karunavata Prabhu's guidance, uh, said, okay, let's start the Facebook advertisement for Bhakti Briksha. And on 
I was really, really expecting Maharaj's uh, reply. And suddenly, around midnight, Maharaj responded. And uh, he gave me a really uh, good enthusiasm in terms of uh, what you can, uh, uh, like what you are doing is something that Srila Prabhupada wanted to do uh, during his married life. And he started with the Go, go, ba go Back to Godhead magazine. And you are at the same stage of your life where you are so desperate. You have sent so much messages about your, your passion and what you want to contribute uh, 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 in, in this devotional journey and he mentioned that you will have all the success that that you will you will need for the, for running this uh, program and i think that was a turning point where where even our uh, the approaches that we were taking on on how we can increase our outreach which became a massive success and we had one of the greatest turnaround for our bhakti riksha in oakley south which which was really hard to improve. And I can only say that this was solely due to the, uh, the Maharaj's uh, uh, instructions and, and the blessings that he gave. And, and I was so foolish that I was getting disappointed because he, at that time it was not disclosed that he was going through this uh, cancer situation and, and the, his medical condition. A and I was so foolish that I can't even understand that Maharaj can be in a situation where he can't respond. And I was getting distressed. But this one particular instruction and, and his, his blessings uh, turned really helpful. And the, with the help of Kaushalan and Prabhu and uh, our, uh, our Shiksha Guru, we, we managed to cultivate our Bhakti Viksha and, and progress further. So this was one of the transformation that also Mar Maharaj helped us to break. And about my last meeting with our Maharaj, definitely Maharaj informed everyone that, okay, you have to, uh, this is the chance that you can, we can meet in person. And we definitely did not want to uh, miss this opportunity. And that's why we went to, uh, even though it was for one week, but we went to Vrindavan. And when we had the opportunity to meet Maharaj, that was the first time I understood that how Maharaj himself is so passionate about the, the service to, uh, to Srila Prabhupada and about this uh, uh, preaching mission. Um, uh, luckily or unluckily, we got interrupted by one of his projects. And Maharaj was so passionate, so sharp in what he has to remember, what he has to instruct to the devotees that they are supporting to the, uh, to, the, to the preaching mission that he has taken up, which gave me a totally different side of Maharaj, which I have never seen before. Because you, if you see the, his lectures, you would see that Maharaj is very funny. Maharaj is giving really nice and peaceful uh, lectures. His Kirtan is definitely ascetic and so energetic. But the other part of the Maharaj was he was very passionate. He was so passionate about the project and, and, and he did not want any moment to stop that project. He was giving so passionate instruction and so actively and so precisely that, okay, at this age, under this kind of cancerous situation, how he can, he can have the same level of memory, how he can have the same level of passion. That was something very eye-popping that even in your worst part of your life as well, you can be contributing so passionately and so merc uh, mercifully to other devotees as well as for all that project. He was managing so many things at the, same, at the time and it was a... a a really a fortunate opportunity for us that uh, even though you are in a very difficult situation, you can manage multiple things with the same energy or even more energy uh, to serve Srila Prabhupada in his mission. And that was, uh, that was one of the things that I can't forget in my life. And, and definitely, Maharaj, we will miss you all the time and all the instruction. But your lectures are, are definitely here for, forever. And we will be uh, serving to your uh, instruction as much as we can. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you, Jeevananda Prabhu. Um, just being considerate of the time, um, I'm sorry for those who may have liked to have said some words, but um, I'm just going to invite Sukadev Prabhu, who's very has been serving with with uh, Guru Maharaj a long time, um, to come and just uh, say some few last words because we still then have Pushpanjali and the Guru Maharaj to come and. You've actually got a presentation, some final words from His Holiness Kanama Kanan Maharaj. So I do apologise if you did want to say something um, and didn't get the opportunity, but unfortunately, yeah, time, time is uh, against us here. But um, I'd like to, yeah, uh, invite Shukadev Prabhu to say some some words. Uh, 
<coughs> I think amongst all of you, I think uh, I could stand here and say I had the most fortune of being able to be with him. Yeah, <clears throat> our journey with Maharaj, I mean, my journey with Maharaj began when I was only 13 years old. And he's no longer here with us. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I think. Uh, Thank you, Sukadev, uh, for trying <laughs> a very, very, very long relationship they've had. And Shukadev Prabhu actually headed up cooking the feast in Gurumaraj's honour today. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, okay. Um, we'll start with... Um, we were going to actually, if it's possible, um, to have Maharaj's instruction at the end, but Keshara suggested we do it before the Pushpanjali, just while everyone's seated. And then, so... Um, if that's possible. Yeah, thank you. So um, we've got Maharaj, is, his uh, strategist here, he's always thinking and planning and of course he was looking even beyond his, his time um, here with us. So um, in his passing, before he passed, he had created a trust. So the Kadamba Trust. So we'd like to um, first show you a video that Maharaj has has made for us all, uh, introducing us to the Kadamba uh, Foundation, and then also to after that um, we'd like to play a video of the final instruction that we received, and then after that um, we're going to uh, do Pushpanjali and and. So, um, with the garage to come. But first, um, just while everyone's seated, because once we do the Pushpanjali, everyone will be up and there'll be Kirtan. And then, of course, um, after that, there is, is, is the feast. So, please don't leave until um, the settings are done. But, yeah, so first, the first video is um, Guru Maharaj's um, initiative of creating the Kadamba Trust. Hare Krishna. Today, I want to introduce to you the Kadamba Foundation. The Kadamba Foundation is an initiative that we have taken to hold the copyright of the various books and CDs that I have produced over the years, so that there will be uh, a continuation um, also after my lifetime, of, uh, of these books and CDs being available to a wider audience. Um, the trustees are those who have been working with the books, and uh, one is Udeva Prabhu from the Netherlands, another one is Gopali from uh, Slovakia, and there is Sanatam from Australia. So all three have ample of experience and I have faith in them that they will be able to uh, manage things nicely. Um, so I hope that through this trust, through this foundation, Kadamba Foundation, um, all of you will continue to uh, to enjoy new projects. Um, there are some manuscripts that are now being finished that will be published in the future. There are some, uh, some CDs that will be recorded now that can also come out in the future. So in this way, we hope that um, through this foundation, I'll continue uh, to be present in a way even after uh, I'm physically no longer on this on this planet. So uh, 
The foundation is looking for support uh, from all of you, and uh, I would highly appreciate that if you could contribute. I'm especially uh, approaching my disciples, friends, well-wishers, um, to help with the Kadamba Foundation uh, as an effort to uh, make books and CDs more available uh, to the world. And uh, that will be possible um, not only by the, the hard work of the trustees, but also by your efforts. Uh, there will be uh, funding required uh, for printing, for uh, layout work, for uh, administrative costs, for uh, a promotion on, on, on the internet, and so on. So, uh, if any of you feel inspired to help in this project, I would be, uh, be very glad. Thank you very, very much. Hare Krishna. If uh, anyone does, uh, after watching that, you can see Maharaja's foundation is set up to help uh, with the printing and, and distribution of the social media and the internet platforms of preaching as well as books and uh, some, South, some South African projects. If you do feel inspired, you can give a donation today. We do have a book table at the back that also is selling some of Maharaja's books uh, and albums in um, so USB drive form as well. And uh, you can go there and uh, there, Tribunga Sham has a, a pay ID um, mobile phone number, the mobile phone number you can get from the book table and um, they and to be able to transfer anything that you may feel inspired to give today to go towards the Kadamba Foundation. Also to next weekend, Hare Krishna Valley is uh, hosting the Boat Festival. Uh, the Boat Festival was actually um, a desire of His Holiness Kadamba Kanana Maharaj. He instructed us back in 2007, he said uh, he ran a retreat at, at Hare Krishna Valley and said, we need to do a boat festival here. It took us a while, but we got there. <laughs> We've got a beautiful boat. So please come along to support that. That was uh, Kadama Kanamaraj's uh, desire to see a boat festival at Hare Krishna Valley. So next, um, please, again, please, if you feel inspired, please give to the Kadama Foundation. Um, next, we're going to play um, uh, Guru Maharaj's, uh, his holidays, Kadama Kadamaraj's last instruction for us while we're all still sitting just to um, absorb. And then um, after that, we will be um, doing the Pushpanjali and an RT, and then after that we will conclude with the feast. So um, please just, um, next we will uh, take um, Maharaja's final instructions for us all. Thank you. Om Gyan Timaram Sya Kananana Salakya Saksur Minitam Yanatas Mai Sigurave Namaha Bancha Kalpatru Vyacha Kripa Sindubye Vyacha Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaisnavevyo Namo Namaha Once Maharaj Pariksit was roaming his kingdom and came across a terrible scene. A scene where a cow 
had been attacked by some low-class dark man dressed like a king who had with a stick broken the legs of a bull. Maharaj Pariksit, being a valiant king, immediately took action and was ready to fight that man in the royal dress. None other than Kali personified. Kali, instead of fighting, immediately fell at the feet of the king like a subordinate, not ready to fight. Maharaj Pariksit took full action and said Kali could not stay in the kingdom. Kali Kali said, what will I do? I took shelter. I am Praja. I exist. I've taken birth. I need to exist somewhere. Where can I exist? Maharaj Pariksit thought, said, you can stay in four places. There where there is gambling, meat-eating, illicit sex, and intoxication. There was no such place. Kali couldn't find such a place, so came back and said, where will I stay? Then Maharaj Brick said, okay, you can stay where gold is stored. <sighs> From this 16th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada phrased the four regulative principles, which he formally introduced for his followers. As Srila Prabhupada was preaching to the modern world, he spelled it out, what to follow to become free from the influence of the age of Kali. Then Mahaprabhu gave the Yuga Dharma the chanting of the holy name and not only that katanchana smite yasmin duskaram sukaram bhavet he also added his mercy and made what is difficult easy and so the fundamental tenets of Krishna consciousness for the modern world took shape. 16 rounds minimum and four regulative principles. <sighs> you all are the fortunate people because you all came in touch with transcendental knowledge and with Vaishnavas. And as a result, you took up 
this process of sadhana bhakti, chanting Hare Krishna, and following four regulative principles. Who in this world, who in this world is prepared to live like that? But by Srila Prabhupada's and his followers' inspiration, we were ready, you were ready. You became the heroes. You're walking a heroic path, most glorious. Everything is blessed on the way. Nothing could be better. What a wonderful life have you been given. So I am very glad that I could be instrumental to inspire you to remain on that path. And through my written, recorded words, recorded kirtan, and all else that remains behind, through the memories in your heart, I will continue to inspire you to stay on this path through thick and thin. When all is blissful, when all is struggle, do not waver. It is you got the greatest treasure. Never forget. Nowhere in this world is there such wealth. The wealthiest man in the world is a pauper. You have the real wealth. Treasure it. Relish it. Cherish it. Hold it close. Hold it close. Don't become slack, neglectful. Hold it close. Chant every day. Hear every day. Carve these principles in stone. <sighs> Let them be there every day and your life will be wonderful and at the end go back to Godhead and we can physically reunite and celebrate there like we've never celebrated before so looking forward to the great, great festival that is to come, where all of us will together and celebrate to another dimension, where the bliss will rise to levels never seen, never heard of. That time is not far away. Life is short. Prabhupada said, just give this one life to me. Please do that. Just give it. And everything will become most amazing. I'm saying, to, I'm saying goodbye to you 
for just a short time, for when we will be, I'll stay with you in my words and memories. I'll be with you on the path. And I'm waiting for you on the other end to meet you again in person. Soon, soon, miracles will happen. Soon. We will see love. We will see bliss. We will see fulfillment beyond our imagination, beyond our expectation. Remember Dhruva. When he met the Lord, all his previous expectations, he said, they're like broken pieces of glass. You gave me jewels. All we ever desired were broken pieces of glass. The Lord will give us jewels. Oh, stay on the path. Don't get lost. Come quickly. Let us join this festival of, of Krishna, the festival of unlimited, ever-growing love. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, 